All right, we're here with Peter's Advantage episode 19 with uh, Miss Harvey, who most of you probably have heard about before because she's been around forever, <laughs> I feel like, out of like the... Hello? So, uh, Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. sorry. I changed my mic settings and I didn't hear you for the last five minutes. So if you told me anything. Uh, well, we're live right now. So, oh, uh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just standing there not saying anything? No, we just went live, actually. So you oh, got hi. lucky. But uh, I'm sorry. But, but there we go. <laughs> Perfect. Um, all right. So you can hear us now. We're good? Yeah, we're good. You couldn't we're hear live. us at all? You just thought we were just ignoring you or what? Well, I, you guys were, I don't know. <laughs> all right, well, don't yeah, make me look sick like a and we're fool. just like whatever dude we don't care <laughs> like, <laughs> i really thought you guys gave no shit <laughs> it's okay it's okay all right well this is the first female guest <gasps> that we've ever had That's on here awesome. uh, we're mostly pretty sexist on this show so we only invite men <laughs> but uh white I'm men a male but, feminist uh, we're trying. It's 2019. We figured we'd branch out a little bit. So, uh, what are you doing right now, Steph? Are you on a team? Are you uh, doing any projects? No. I, I know you're always posting stuff. You're always yeah. you're always somewhere new somehow. I feel like you're always <laughs> you're always somewhere. Yeah, um, it's been the it's crazy because the last two years I kind of didn't play officially on any team, just like friends teams and whatnot. And I've never been busier, which is so ironic. Um, but I do a lot of conferences, panels, uh, presentation keynotes. Uh, I've been uh, doing a lot of side project. Obviously, uh, I'm the Canadian ambassador for Omen. I was the Dream Xbooks person in Montreal. You know, so I have a lot of extra activities around that as well. Um, like I did a tech talk yesterday. <laughs> um, so it, like things are going well, but. Uh, like I started coaching Livid in MDL like last last week. Okay, so it's not like, <laughs> oh my God, you're an official coach. No, okay, <laughs> like I was on on like five of their practices so far. So it's been actually pretty cool. I love that, um, and we'll see where that leads. Uh, but I have other secret projects. Maybe when you bring me back on board in a couple of months. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep you guys updated, but I have some it's stuff going on. Year, so you wait. Oh, and I'm doing a lot of stuff with the Olympic committee as well for like esports. The Olympic? Olympic. Yeah, esports and the Olympics and stuff. So. You're telling me the Olympics are going to have esports before they got powerlifting? I'm kind of <laughs> pissed off right now. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, dude. <laughs> well, I imagine the esports Olympic thing might take uh, a long time. Okay, so it's already our third meeting. But it took like a year and a half, so don't get your your hopes too yeah. fast. No, it's cool though. That's like a good yeah. start. Yeah, so that's um, pretty cool. Oh, and yeah. I have web series in Canada. I'm on a radio show as well as a columnist. Like, you know, I have, I do. A You've bunch also of stuff. won that one game show, right? Yeah, the okay, smartest like person. Two years yeah, ago, my mom watched that one actually. She did. <laughs> yeah. What, what? Oh, but you're, I think your mom and I follow each other on Twitter. Yeah, she's your biggest fan. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love your mom. Um. So you used to work for Ubisoft, right? Do you still do anything? No. So um, I worked for Ubisoft for seven years as a game designer, uh, which, by the way, is like a dream job. It's pretty great. It just happens that esports is even cooler. So, <laughs> so yeah. I went into esports, but um, it was really fun. Uh, I mean, they keep telling me I can come back at any time, so there's no bad blood. It's really just because I am somewhere else in my life right now. But man, designing games is amazing. But it's good you always have the option to go back, like if, yeah. if you want to, right? So uh, yeah, I feel that one day not, I'll make a game. Not everyone, game. yeah, not not everyone that quits their job can go back. So yeah, it's like <laughs> it, can, it can be a risk. You're like, oh, should I quit this for esports? And like everyone knows, esports is kind of weird. Like you could get a good job for one year, and then that's it. Like so yeah. you make like decent money for a year or two and yeah. then you get phased out and then you're screwed. So some, sometimes it's bigger risk than people think, like tr trying to branch out. Um, I agree. And that's why when I left uh, UB, I actually went on a one year sabbatical. So they gave it, they gave to me the opportunity to do that, to do that. So they were like, oh, if esports doesn't work out, come back after a year. And then I was like, well, actually it's going pretty great. I love it. I might come back in a couple of years, but I'm I'm okay now, so I didn't come back. <laughs> so yeah, are you? They're pretty, uh, cool. they're pretty cool. 
No, I, I mean, honestly, I should probably play some of their games. I'm not a huge single player game person, but like I should because I know they're fun. Yeah. But I don't know if you guys are like me, where it's like if there's not like a multiplayer aspect <laughs> to the game, I'm like not drawn in. Like, like I it not needs even to, be like to over- try it. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's like uh, Overwatch, I get to play versus other people. Dota, I get to play versus other people. Like, there's a competitive uh-huh. side to it. And if that doesn't exist, I'll, like, play for, like, an hour and be like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. I don't know. Well, That's just me, though. Getting through a game is just so much harder when you don't have teammates with you sometimes. You're just, yeah. like, you have to blame well, get, yourself. Like, you get kind of bored, you know? Like, yeah, I, I get bored, too. To, like, there's no teammates. Yeah. And, like, I think it's just a mindset. Like, I need to get a pizza and, like, just play... <laughs> for like eight hours yeah or i'm almost i'm almost more down nowadays to watch watch other people play single player games than just play them myself just watch but you guys are the reason why so many single player games release awful easy like multiplayer <laughs> side <laughs> uh side features just so that you could try it out oh well, like you know they have a multiplayer <laughs> try it out and then multiplayer is shit because they just want to drag you in to play the single player. I'm a, um, I'm a lost cause. I'm still playing. I'm I'm back on vanilla WoW. Like, oh, okay. I, I went back to my roots. <laughs> I'm I'm done for. I mean, it's a pretty good route, so I'm not gonna blame you for that. Yeah, it's, it's actually friends, pretty fun. Like friends are not into esports; they're just gamers. They took off one week of work. Yeah, no, I have uh, on our server. We I play on Rattlegore and vanilla WoW and. There's 22 people that I haven't talked to from high school and friends that are in our guild. Like, it's like everyone came back and we like have like a reunion of like, <laughs> just like all these people that I've never, haven't talked to in years. So it's kind of weird. Like you said, like, it's like people that don't even game anymore. Like my one friend, he just got married and I was at his wedding. Like he hasn't played any games in like five years. And I told him about, wow. And he just like, all right, I'm getting it. So he like bought a PC and like got it. Like I don't know. He bought a PC crazy. for a while, vanilla. <laughs> well, you know, it doesn't take a lot of power to play, yeah. right? So it's like he could have played on his probably on like his HP laptop. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> I play yeah. TFT on my lap, like tiny, tiny, tiny laptop. I even TFT? watched him. I was on my tiny, tiny, tiny TFT. Like oh, those team like, fight tactics. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I play. I can play League on those. Like. There's no graphic card and it still works. <laughs> he doesn't even need one. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like moving images, basically. But I have like 10 FPS watching demos, so it's kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, then then Counter Strike's over here, like, oh, you have the newest state of the art five thousand dollar PC. You're gonna get like 80 frames. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, like, actually, yeah. I got I got this brand new laptop two days, well, like three days ago. Uh, one of the Omen like dual screen, 144 hertz, whatever. It has a a GeForce 2080 in it. It's what? Yeah, it's and it's super tiny. It has two screens on it. Um, you don't even need to tab to use the second one. Like it's kind of cool. I can stream like from any hotel room. I have like 500 FPS in CS. It's kind of wow. interesting. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. That is pretty crazy, actually. I mm-hmm. didn't even know that existed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, Next so I time don't know, we're at an event, I'll make you play on it. You'll be like, Dee. I'm just going to bring this up for a point, but like, uh, I don't know if anyone saw, I made like a YouTube video about like female Counter Strike or gaming and like how people complain. Like, what's your, because I don't recently? know. Recently? Yeah, I recently made it. In the like, last couple of days? Two days ago. Or oh, okay, no, I didn't, I didn't see that yeah. one. So, like, basically, I was just saying in it, uh, like, a lot of people that complain about girl Counter Strike, you know, they're like, oh, they don't deserve this money. Or whatever you, you probably heard that a million times in your life, right? They're like, oh, blah blah blah. They're not good enough, whatever. But I don't think I, the point I was making is like, this money doesn't just magically go into the, like your shitty open team, or like it doesn't just go into like guy CS or I don't know. I call it guy CS, but you know what I mean, like mixed CS. You know, like whatever. Like it, it doesn't just go back. It was there for like a purpose. So like, what do you think yeah. as like a player going to these tournaments? Like, does that do you think girls get like annoyed by all these comments? Like, does it not, does it bother you? Does it not bother you? Like, do you think they're just misinformed? It's, it's a very, I think it's a very complex topic, but I do believe there's a lot of ignorance and being mad at ignorance is, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a mix of being immature and also being, um, not a good teacher and i think it's way more important to teach people than get mad at them so now i go the route of trying to be an advocate of my community by explaining that um first of all 
these tournaments, they happen like three, four times a year. It's not like we have our own leagues and we only play versus girls and like whatever. And then as far as the salary goes, you mentioned it, the salary wouldn't be going to a, uh, a same level Counter-Strike team that has um, zero publicity and marketing and value to the team. Uh, it's not just about marketing. It's also about diversity. It's about making a difference in the community. Like, it's a lot deeper than just like, oh, this money is being wasted. Well, I mean, um, like, I remember some of the sponsors, they just, they want to promote, like, female gaming, right? Like, they, because you have to think about it from, like, I was saying that there's a, there's, there's, there's a, two genders in a market, right? If you're only sending, selling to men, then you're selling half your product. Yeah. If you get girls to love gaming, then you can sell double the amount of yeah. video cards. You can sell more mice and mouse pads. So it's in their best interest to get both sexes to play. So they want to have girls feel like, oh, there's things for us to do. There's things for us to play, leagues or whatever. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, like some people don't want to play super competitive. They just want to have fun and they want to go play with other girls. Like, or yeah. just like, Guys want to, you know, guys go and play with like rec leagues in hockey. They don't want to be pro. They just go and play with their friends. You know, it's like giving people little options to do that just to have a place to play. And plus, obviously, everyone knows in gaming, like, you're probably going to get harassed a lot less playing with other girls than you are yeah. to be harassed playing you, with a bunch of guys. Like, I never, when I play with girls, I never get insulted because of the vagina i don't you know it's always <laughs> oh you that's suck that's surprising or, like you don't practice enough or you don't do this do that but it's never like uh oh my god you play like a girl well, let's get rid of her she's a girl you know that's that kind of bullshit gets out of the door and we just talk about skill about work about practices about strats about like progression like you know and that's the kind of thing that gamers want to talk about like if i was gonna talk to you about Let's say, Corey, I discriminate you because of the your muscle. Every time we play together, I always say, you missed that shot because your muscle are too big. <laughs> Can you imagine how, I already say that to him. That's what I call how frustrating for. that would be? Like, you know, and it's kind of yeah. like that for us. Um, sorry, I didn't yeah, mean to cut you. Yeah, well, people, uh, so Benita used to play FPLC a lot. And the complaints mm -hmm. that went towards her, I'm not going to say who says these, but just things like, oh, I hate the way she sighs. And it's like, Dude, I sigh. I know like all these guys that are like fuck or like shit or like sigh into the microphone all the time. And it's like, it's not like I'm tr I'm trying to like just say Benita's flawless when she played FPLC all the time. But it's like just this like the complaints that come out are so just just different. But you just, know, like, yeah. but Benita is a perfect example of someone that actually kicks or butts off trying to get better every day. Okay, and <laughs> yeah. all this she played shit it a lot. All the shit that she goes through in Rank G and FPLC is like all the guys are like, girls should be playing with guys. They should be part of our community, blah, blah, blah. Like, fuck female tournaments. And then you have someone like Benita that really tries to make it, that wants to prove that she can be the best player in the world. And the community kind of shits on her for, for like, instead of like lifting her up and like, okay, let's take Benita on our own wings and like lift her up and bring her to the next level together as a community. You know, she, I, for me, it's, it's like, there's no way we can win. No, nah, it really seems we like there's win. some guys that are just trying to pick fights sometimes. Yeah. Or just like, you just, so, yeah. like with people don't understand, at least with Benita's like, even since 1.6 days, she's been playing 10 mans with guys yeah. for like, since two, uh, when, when did I talk to her? Probably like 2000, five 2006 or something <laughs> like she was just like so long ago nine yeah, ten when, yeah exactly or maybe a couple years out. i can't remember the exact timeline but like either way like we'd be in 10 mans and like to be honest she wasn't like a lot of times it was just like you try to fill the 10 man and like if she got asked she would always play you know it was just mm -hmm. like she was always trying to play if she got the chance to play with like better people yeah. so like um like yeah of course there's gonna be girls and guys that are lazy and they just want things given to them. And I can totally understand when guys get mad at girls like that are tweeting that, Oh, they deserve to be in a league or they deserve to be in something that they didn't earn. Like I get that part, like, because there are some, there are some girls that will be like, we deserve to blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well then prove it kind of thing. But at the same time, like if they're working their way up and they make it there normally, then that's a good thing.
you know also if i can help because I, I have this debate all the time so um i kind of have some experience regarding that but uh if that can help for guys out there still are doubters and that don't get it whatever um think it think about it when we have tournament like esdc or wegs uh the ES, esg that restrict the condition to get in by countries okay um it's a way to promote esports in like smaller <laughs> countries and really reach across the world and it's not all tournaments that require that it's just specific ones and it's their way to uh make sure that like singapore has a team there that like somalia can try to get a team there or whatever um south africa or south africa right but we all know the strongest regions would destroy the other ones but we still make these tournaments because we want to push esports everywhere in the world we we want to make sure that like we we have diversity we want to make sure that we can help these countries progress and blah blah blah, blah. um it's the same thing for women that's why these tournaments are for and we don't complain about college um esports league or college of football or all these kind of um restricting tournaments because we understand them but when it comes to women there's this this kind of hate about promoting the game within a demographic and it's i don't get it because i don't see anyone complaining about overwatch collegiate league that has a lot of money in it i haven't seen one comment saying um yo this money should go to pros yeah, one yeah. not one and but why do we do we say that the money towards the female tournaments should go to pros? Okay, this is this is the reason that I think you get a, a lot of people that complain is they think that if you talk about football, then they like no one's ever being like, oh, well, these girls should be playing with guys because you total everyone understands that a four hundred pound linebacker over will kill a woman. Watch like Overwatch collegiate. No, no, I'm just saying for my point. So okay, everyone okay. like in sports aspects, like physical, <laughs> physical trait wise, everyone kind of gets it, right? They're like okay, a guy is physically built to be stronger than a girl, so they have to have their own league for safety reasons at the very least. Mm -hmm. um, never mind the fact that guys on general just have way more upper body strength. Like, there's nothing a girl can do to, to match it ever. Like, unless you're some freak and the guy doesn't train or something. But, like, in general, guys have way more, like, physical power. So, but then you get into esports, and that's where people are like, well, physical traits no longer matter because it's on the computer. So they think that everyone should just be playing the same like thing. And that, I think that's where one of the main groups of people come from is they're like, well, this isn't like a sport. There's no physical attributes. Everyone's on the same playing field. You could be, you know, you could not have any legs and it doesn't, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Like if you're strong, if you're weak, if you're, if you're small, if you're big, if you're a guy or a girl, and then they think that that is why, like that everyone should be playing the same thing. And there I should don't, be no co actually... I don't think the playing field is the same, actually, because I mean, just like observing what happened with Benita, for example, like you can be a girl that's playing in this in this like FPLC, you're supposed to be getting better. She actually even qualified. She like got taken out of FPLC because it was a bunch of invites at first. She got taken out, but then she legitimately qualified. But once you're in that environment, your playing experience isn't the same as like a guy's playing experience. Like if a guy's playing badly in FPLC, like people are just like, man, this guy fucking sucks. But like with Benita, it's like a whole controversy. It's a whole like, there's this whole, has to be this whole debacle about why like she's not playing well and why she's like letting other guys down that are playing in this. Like the, like the environment is not even, I'd say. It's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like to, to go on to another topic. It's like, there's not a lot of black guys that play Counter-Strike. Because as soon as people figure out a guy's black online, they're just like, you know, saying the N word to them and just like harassing them like fucking crazy. It's like so bad and it's just awful. It's so malicious. And it's just, even though physically speaking, esports shouldn't be as easy or it should be easy as easy for everybody because there's no physical aspect. It's. <laughs> You're not going to have the same kind of like upbringing. It's like if you're richer so you're and you're saying if Benita wants to go and do something, someone's less likely to like pop flash or like work with her or slash like ma like help her in the game just because she's a chick kind of thing. Like they, they, they rather might, be the one getting it, pop flashed for. It, like, it might not be that, but it's going to be a lot less encouraging for her to ask for a pop flash if it's like some dude that's been on the team kind of berating <laughs> her beforehand. 
like i'm not i don't i think like i think some people will still try to help and like try to make her ideas work or whatever like okay i remember one game in particular i was playing train with her i was playing ivy so i wasn't really involved in this but she was like she was like saying like I i'm gonna i'm gonna push i'm gonna play ladder this round or whatever uh can someone come outside with me she didn't say anyone's name and just no one ever helped her and then it was kind of like yo like why like why is no one responding to this kind of thing like someone should fucking go out and like help like if she asks for a pop flash maybe they'll throw a pop flash but it's a little different but i think it's just like you're fighting two battles at the same time when you're a girl playing games you're fighting the battle of playing the actual game and you're fighting the battle of like how can i avoid like just let this harassment just like wash over me so i don't just get dismissed like dismiss entirely it at least that's how i feel but I i'm sure I, uh, can say more um I want to say two points here. I want to say, Corey, your point is super valid, but it doesn't mean that because there's no restriction that minorities currently... This isn't my point. System. This is just me saying what other people oh, say. Yeah. You okay. know what I mean? Well, like, I'm just... When they bring I, I'm that playing point, devil's advocate. You know, I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the stuff. Okay. I didn't understand that, but now I do. So that point is... Um, it's important because it doesn't mean that anybody can pit it, pick it up, that people naturally will. It's a little bit like um like girls are supposedly bad in math and it's hard, like or in science and we always push towards girls to get in science because there's less girls going in science um it's not but it's a fair playing field but for some reason uh, there's the stigma about science that should be for guys now you know anyway so it's just an example of it doesn't matter that if the playing field should be even uh a minority has more difficulties joining a field uh that they are can be pointed at and especially in gaming where they can be harassed for being different and if we mentioned the the color of the skin but um as soon as you play your voice makes you know that you're different as a woman so your first interaction one of your first interaction uh will make people treat you differently sometimes for the better they'll be like oh you know i'll help you i'll train you whatever sometimes i'm the worst like go so back to the works, kitchen what do you think works best for you like if you were to join a, a like just say a matchmaking and some guy was maybe it, there's nothing you can really do to the dude that's like just being racist and saying dumb shit he's just going to be an idiot there, there's no point but like let's say there's a dude that's like you could just tell he's like he doesn't like you because you're a girl like you could you could just tell do you be nice to that person do you mute him like what do you think is the best course for girls because a lot of girls play matchmaking and they play pugs and they don't know what to do i feel like they don't like they end up just muting people a lot of the time i think is probably the best course for the people that are really bad but for the people like you still want to hear comms and stuff you know like it's still it's kind of annoying like to be like oh just mute them it's like well if the person is calming then you're missing out like if you have to mute two people every pug you lose half half your team's comms yeah so. i i don't mute but it's because i have the thickest skin ever regarding that shit because i've been through so much um i just don't <laughs> mute and i pretend whatever i my idea is to kill them with kindness, but my kindness is my gameplay. So let's say they're assholes, whatever. I continue my calm. I'm super intense. I'm like, um, like one long, good job, guys. You know, I continue, whatever. And then at some point, I win a round or a clutch or whatever. And usually, it calm down because by that point, it's been like eight rounds, and I'm still like really into the game, kind of ignoring them. And usually, they flip back and they become kind of um, neutral slash good. Uh, and then if they continue, usually when I know that the vibe of the team is on my side, then there's just one asshole. Then sometimes I might flip. I'm be like, yo, shut the fuck up, you moron. Like, we're trying to fucking win a game. You're just being an asshole. Yeah. And like, you know, but I let it reach a point where I know my place in the game. And it sucks and it shouldn't be that way. Um, we shouldn't have to live with it, but that's my coping mechanism uh my protection mechanism regarding I, I definitely think like the the just either jokes or like killing them with kindness is the easiest thing to do because like even for me if i'm death matching or something and some guys like semphis you suck like you're washed up or whatever i just say like that's why i'm death matching smiley face and then they're like <laughs> my bad big fan like you know like they're, they're not like like what are they gonna they can't you can't keep being a dick with someone isn't like giving you it like yeah. uh, most people will feel are like oh shit like okay like I, you know like they just they wanted a reaction and they didn't get it they're not going to continue <laughs> to like just be a dick for no reason and then the, yeah. the ones that will you can never change them like it, it's a lost cause mm -hmm. on those ones like 
And also sometimes, like, it, like I've learned that sometimes on Twitter, whatever, talking to an 11-years-old boy from, like, India, you know? <laughs> like, do I really want to get into this fight with this little kiddo? You know, the one that really, really pisses me off is when I know it's, when it's someone I know and he's, like, like you know, a 25-year-old boy that I know from our community and that writes a sassy comment. Those freaking piss me off because I'm like, dude, I thought you were smarter than that, you know? <laughs> so those really piss me off. But um, usually uh, it's fine. But to bring out a point I said earlier to to Bryn, you mentioned that, you know, we, we kind of have to fight two battles. Um, I read a lot about poker and chess because they are interesting comparison to gaming because there's no physical requirement but in both field there's about zero women uh there's like one there's woman some in the, poker there's some in poker but yeah no chess there is, is like there, there is well. some in poker yeah, yeah, but yeah. like almost none usually right, right. it's because po poker is less like a rank one rank two rank, like every tournament right, right, is right, like right. a mix of luck a mix of skills whatever right but in chess out of the top 100 there's like one i think or even yeah. for the longest time there was none no, yeah and there's so many research for chess because it's a whole game right and there's one research that showed that let's say two players with the same elo it's great because everyone knows what elo means now in games uh Two players with the same elo. One is a girl, one is a guy. If the guy knows it's a girl, he's going to start right away being extremely aggressive um, in the game. Like aggressive mood, move, even irrational moves. And most of the time, if the girl knows she's playing a guy, even if they're the same elo, she will lose most of her game versus a guy than if she doesn't know the sex of the person or if she ass assume it's a girl. So there is a psychological um, aspect to in chess that guys are supposedly better than girls in chess. So when a girl plays a guy, even if the girl has a higher elo, the chances of her winning are dramatic, dramatically decrease if she knows it's a guy. And it's the inver the opposite is also the same. If a, a guy knows it's a girl, um, his chances of winning are even if he's a lower elo are increase and when i play cs this is what i notice obviously they know like when i was on clg or whatever every guy team knew who we, we were right away when they played us and there was one factor that really was make it or break it every time especially when we played like pro teams is if if you let them win the first five round they'll do something crazy disrespectful if you let them win these for five round and you don't punish them for doing something crazy and super aggressive you're fucked. the game is over they're gonna do some irrational plays take the risk that usually they wouldn't even if it's official matches um and they're gonna just disrespect the shit out of you until the end and that was our biggest fight is like stay disciplined um, make sure you win those five rounds or at least punish them really early to just like, you know, just put that back on their respect level that you're supposed to have because you're in the same league or same tournament or whatever. Um, and it was so crazy because everything that I read about chess could be, chess could be applied to CS um, from my experience. So if you guys are interested, chat or whoever is watching this, people at home no, that's definitely an interesting stat like the know, chess like, like uh that people just lose because they're like facing another guy like i didn't know that yeah, um, i would so say that your cs example of uh people pushing and doing crazy stuff like that's definitely true but that's definitely true for uh, a lot of weaker teams like mm -hmm. uh, if, if a good team is playing a lower team they know they're better they're always going to do a little bit crazier stuff. I'm sure it's worse for you guys because they'll do even crazier yeah. stuff. Like if they, because you know how some guys are, they're like, oh, they're just so bad. So they'll do like even extra crazy. But like, yeah. but um, if even if you watch like someone like simple, if he's playing a tier three team, he he does some absurd things. Like, <laughs> like he does, like he'll be like lurking and smell like stuff he wouldn't do, you know, like normally. But he knows that he's better. Yeah, you know? it's so a valid like, point. So maybe it has something to do about the respect level. You know, as soon as you're a girl. 
even if the team is not yeah, as good. I, I, I the would say like if, if you're an equal skill to an equal guy, they probably just automatically think they're better, even if they're not. So it gives yeah. them it gives them confidence. And CS is such a like confidence based game that like if you yeah. if you're holding an angle and like the way I've explained always explained it is like if someone can sense you're you you have fear in Counter Strike, you're done. Like, like <laughs> if if you are cowering and you're backing up into corners and people can push you and they know that you're like not gonna swing on them, it gives you so much more freedom to just bully people, you know? Because you you played versus people like if they're playing like too passive, you know how it easy it is to just run up and kill them. Like if you know where they are, like if they swing on you though, they might kill you. But like if they're afraid, they won't do that. So um CS is definitely like a confidence based game. And I think you even notice that in like pros that like decline is they often start playing more and more reserved and they start playing yeah. safer and safer and then because they're getting shit, because they're doing bad and like sometimes it's better to just keep playing your normal game and wait till your skill <laughs> comes back up. Oh my God, that's so true though, what you said um, about the safer and safer. And I think that is something that can also be applied to like, I don't know, me as a player. I was I, like, you know, I kind of lost my way at the end because I was trying to not suck as much and play safer. And it's like a. <laughs> There, there's spiral. a balance right like you don't want to do stupid things and just die but you also don't want to start the round out using all four of your grenades in, in 10 seconds and then like hiding behind a box you know what i mean <laughs> like like you you got like you gotta you gotta play with a little bit of of gusto like a little bit of confidence you know like yeah like you gotta you gotta get some sort of info and be able to like take some shots like the game is all about risk reward right so if something has a 70 percent chance to work that's good in counter-strike that's like a that's a good odd to take um yeah. I, I see it all the time in lower level cs like if you play cash is a, is a good example of b and you just throw both your smokes to to stall them out and then you just sit in the site you get mullied and you die like like you, you literally yeah. had zero chance like you couldn't you will never you were never going to win that round so uh i don't know yeah that's I I, I have you guys played the new cash that. by the way uh, just we just did a randomly? podcast thing with FM Pone yesterday, actually. Yeah. Oh, about cool. It. Um, so he was explaining some of his reasoning on a re return fire. Uh, I haven't actually officially like played it in a scrim or anything, but I played like I MM, MM a few times on it. It's pretty good, actually. I think I like I like it actually. Okay, I can't wait to see it. Like, they usually do good things. Right? Yeah, the, <laughs> it looks good. I mean, um. <laughs> It looks really bright to me. Yeah, like maybe it's very they have a complaint, but that's also my eye is kind of sensitive to light. So if you're I, using I might be a... extra saturation, it's gonna be kind of crazy. Like already, like if you're already making your game pop like the way I'm sure Corey does, that you know. Yeah. No. Exactly. I have. I use high brightness until my eyes hurt too much, and then I turn yeah. it down. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> but um. So another point I was making in the game, and I'll just use like MSQ as an example for this. So like um, most, not everyone's going to know her she is, but a lot of like older, like longer term players probably will. She was like one of those players that played on like guy teams for a long time, um, you know, in Maine and like Premier or whatever. She was always like on those teams. She wouldn't join a girl team for like the longest time, only like, I don't know, maybe a year ago or something she started doing that. Um, but my point was more like, what do you think about, like the two roads girls have. Cause like, you know, guys mm -hmm. often give girl shit for like not doing what Bree did. Like they're like, yeah. they're, they, they always say like, Oh, well you should just play on a guy team and work your way up and try to get on a team. And, and I, my point in the video was <clears throat> you got to think about how hard it is to go pro just in general, like being a girl or a guy, 99.9% .9 of people don't make it professionally. So you're ready probably not going to go pro regardless of your gender no matter how much you try you're probably not going pro so when you take that into account and on top of that you're a girl you have to grind up and like let's say you get on an mdl team right and you you're gonna have to spend years grinding right it's not going to be a month it's not going to be a year it's going to be like a long process to eventually get on a bottom tier pro league team maybe maybe and then you're it's going to be a long time like think about how Think about the like the mountain you'd have to climb to get on liquid, you know, just as anyone. But then also adding the girl factor on top of that is going to make it even harder. So then you have the other option is you join a girl team. You got to go to tournaments. You get a salary. You get to travel. You get to um, do promotional stuff. You get free sponsor stuff. You got to do all this stuff. 
and I'm, I'm not going to say with no effort or anything, because obviously you have to be like, not every girl can just go pro. It's not like that. Like you still have to be good, but like, let's say you were good enough to be in premier or main or something. So instead of like, doing that next grind to becoming like a pro player, you go and join a girl team <clears throat> and you compete at these tournaments. In my mind, that's just like a smart choice, like in general, like just in life, you know what I mean? Like who wouldn't, I, like in my opinion, like you, you get to go to what, six countries in a year. Like for you, if you're playing, you, I mean, you probably went to four big tournaments a year, right? Like, you know, Poland, Denmark, whatever. Then on top of that, you know, you probably went and spectated a couple lands, got invited to promo stuff, like that kind of stuff. Do you think that that there's any merit to anything like that got like to, well, to grinding as a guy or, or joining a girl thing? And I'm not saying it's like an easy way out. It's just a different option. You know, like, OK, one thing about that is for the longest time, even when you're a guy pro you made zero money. So it, it didn't really matter. Um, girls team like for i don't know for, i don't know for how long you did it for free but for me i well, 2012 I, I never got any salary and yeah then, and even then it was like our first salary was 700 dollars. exactly right? like, so, that's not that's not a ton of money i didn't get a salary before, before 2015 although like a lot of my trips were paid and whatnot um i 10 years of my career was pure um passion of being the best in the world in something right so now we can say okay you have a choice in the last three years of becoming part of a team or whatnot but you have to realize how many girls in america get to get like get to do that currently 10 <laughs> like that's it so even within america like us canada um you have to be the test 10 best female player in well that's what i think i don't countries. a lot of people don't understand is like you don't just go and play girl counter strike and get on the best girl team like it's still yeah. it's still like a lot of work right it's just like you don't get on the best guy team like instantly even if you're good like it it takes a, a while and those same girls have been around for a long time too it's not like the spots aren't changing a lot it's the yeah the you guys are eventually trying to do talents every once in a while but for the most part the names have remained somewhat similar for the last five years and like and the thing is that most people think they are making a fucking fortune and that's not that's just not the case that's just not the case they would make more money if they what i'm doing. like uh when you're just playing and you're not doing content because you have practice all the time and you're traveling for tournament and you're they're they're making a salary to live by but that's very recently not like 2015 when we signed it was like it was not enough you know so um so there's this illusion that we make a lot of money they're so lucky but you know there's so much work behind and we don't make that much money you know if you go to esports earning and you see how much money i made out of tournaments in my life i made like 28,000 in the last 16 years of my career in counter strike <laughs> earning so like all the jokes this money should be invested in pros like it's kind of bullshit like well, that's that my point 25 is like, 000 not... is not even the price of a freaking stage like the literally like putting the stage up at a major costs <laughs> more than twenty five thousand dollars. that was so my like... point in the, in the game is like i was like uh if you go to like a a big international tournament first place is like two hundred fifty thousand dollars. you know what i mean and like uh, before i felt like the girl top prize money was generally like nine to fifteen thousand dollars like that was like first place until this so new west g coach the team yeah <laughs> until west g came and now yeah. these iems i think what 50k for the iem last one and west g was like a lot more or like I, I can't remember i don't know if you know it was the first the first spot last year was a hundred thousand and this like year they, dec yeah. they decreased it to 60k okay um, which is which is what the most ever for a girl yeah, yeah it's still freaking nuts um but even with all of that i still only make 28 and i finished bronze twice at legs so like <laughs> like it's it's you know it's still for me it's kind of pocket change companies that make millions to just promote diversity promote like you do you know okay i'm talking to the camera here because i want people at home to understand do you know how many times a girl came to me and told me they started either competing or working in games or um, playing Counter-Strike or went to a tournament because, because of me? 
like, or because of like my teammates or whoever. It happened, I'm not even exaggerating, hundreds of times. It happens all the time. Every event I go to, a girl comes up and I'm like, I've been watching your stream since 2013, or I studied in video games because of you. I even worked at, with girls at Ubisoft that said they went into uh, animation or programming because they saw me on a TV show. And they were like, if this girl can do it, I can do it too. So um, the money being invested is just for us to be a stronger community because the more diverse we are, the better we're gonna be. That's just a fact. That's just a fact. So when, a guy or when people complains about girl playing game for me it's like i don't want change it's like an old man this chair i don't think people should smoke weed like you know um and that's how i feel when people are like we don't like women suck they shouldn't be there and in my mind it's just like well your community your community is just going to be stronger because of all the women that are going to jump in and eventually we're going to find a new minority and we're going to try to help them as well and we're all going to get better. Games are going to get better. Competitions are going to get better. Talent is going to get better. Because I do believe that having women at tournament makes them more interesting to watch. Um, in talent, when there's girls behind the screen, um, it just brings more diversity than having always the same white male with the same opinion, being mad at life, talking about, <laughs> about the same thing all the time. I want that guy to exist, but I also want diversity because i think all opinions and all strength amongst everyone makes great stuff anyway sorry my rant is over <laughs> that's true i mean the more diversity the more there's more people there are to innovate there's more people that are going to raise up the scene exactly. more ways that other people are going to get involved it's just i mean it's overall just a good thing when more people are involved in your scene why would you not want like fortnite has so many like dude I think, I don't know what everyone's opinion is here on Fortnite, but I think that game is like, eh, sometimes, like, it's kind of, I don't like it personally that much, but it's got a huge scene, and it's got all these content creators, and it's got all these people that are involved with it, and they're not pushing away girls all the time or whatever, and it's just like, look at how big their world championship is, like, why, and, and we as Counter-Strike players are upset that their prize pool is so big, it's because their diversity is, like, massive, it's because everyone plays that game, like, that's why, I mean, I want everyone to play Counter Strike. So, girls play Counter Strike. Like, yeah, minorities play Counter Strike. Yeah, it's just a good thing. But for that Plus, to happen, we need Valve to jump in as well. Then to be guys, like, we yeah. want, we want. Then this guys, weird, you, right? you have a better chance to interact with some girls, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> guys just like want to push girls away. Like, dude, you could get a girlfriend. Like, maybe. bro, come game with me. Get these chicks out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No girls allowed in my treehouse, dude. <laughs> But Foodies. you know, you know how weird that is, though. How Valve caters a lot to the casual CS players, but um, they don't. Okay, how can I explain my thought? They don't go all the way in. They just like casual lightly to the casual. They're just like, oh, here's one say? operation, like every six. Yeah, months. yeah. And then they balance like so that the matchmaking is more balanced and like yay and they're like oh casuals because that's what that's you guys play the most our game which i completely agree with your casual should matter but if your casual matters then fucking make features for them like create tons of the great features that currently we don't have uh, like yeah, i'm hoping fuck i'm not I'm i don't know anyone involved right now the I'm hoping, I'm hoping going, that but... that new Riot FPS kind of lights a fire in the I know, right? Because like, uh, yeah. right now, honestly, they don't have a lot of incentive to really care. Because Counter-Strike is just the big dog. You know, like, it's just... I'm not saying it's right the way they go about it, but I could see it from, like, a financial standpoint. They're like, people are buying cases. We got a lot of players. They don't have any other game to go to. Fuck it. Like, whereas, like... If they actually have a, another game like taking players from them, they're gonna have to start advertising more and like pumping out more content, creating more seamless UIs and stuff. The best example is to go in Dota. Just open yeah. Dota one time and look at how seamless everything is. The demo UI is insane. It's like instant. It's got like fast forward through pauses. Like it's all. It's so nice. And we it's got, got this demo for, UI like, highlights and things too. Like I don't know, our demo so UI was only added because we complained back in alpha 
that there was no way to watch a demo, so they just ripped the source one, threw it in the game, and never it's changed the same, it. It's, just, it's, it's the same GUI. It's the same graphical user interface. It's so you know when old. you watch a demo and you have to press around backward and you're like, oh, crash, please don't crash, please don't crash. Yeah. And yeah, you're I just know. there like waiting. Like, oh my god. Just pray. Um, that's what's so puzzling with me because any company in the year 2019 knows not to sit on your success. Look at the best example, Kodak, and I think it's Canon, Kodak and Canon. Kodak was like the bit shot. They had all the, 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 the cameras and Canon was like, oh, we're going to go digital, blah, blah. Nobody cared about Canon. And everyone was like, oh, Kodak is the way to go. Kodak just sat and then Canon did like. Yeah. Oh. I feel like it's just Canon and Nikon now. I don't even think yeah. Kodak's in the and picture anymore. Kodak just disappeared. Like yeah. went from like one of the biggest companies in the US trash um yeah, not like trash Polaroid but like also. yeah Polaroid just died also like that too. so it, it's like for me it's when i hear stuff that like cs shouldn't it shouldn't like they don't care because there's no competition like i agree with you i don't think it's normal i think that wow while you're sitting on top of the world they're valve loves stats they're probably looking at the stats and they're probably seeing that the scene is not growing that much that the numbers are kind of stale in the last like year two years and that should ring a lot of alarms. It should be like, holy shit, more and more games are becoming better. There's more and more competition. Why don't we, you know, create new freaking features and stop releasing new maps and skins? Because that's just, we're, are, you, are you bored of that? Well, skins are cool, but not enough for me to like, I stopped buying skin. I spent $2,000 in skin in old cases opening the first two years and <laughs> not one sense in the last two because it's just always the same shit you yeah know? just speaking with know. your wallet yeah yeah uh, it's, it's it's really just until that riot fps comes out there's no reason for them to do it I, it's like for some i don't know why they don't care about the new player experience more because it's so it, it's actually kind of admittedly bad in dota and counter-strike they tried to like make a small effort in dota to make that a little better like having a tutorial but in counter-strike there's a weapons course that you run through that's just trash like you know the the thing like i've accidentally clicked it a few times and it's just this <laughs> thing is garbage it. it's just like it's just like you run through like a shooting course or something it's so bad and it's just, but just like, the fact how is this that teaching anyone you uh, can't even play with the basic settings without it being a trash ex experience like, yeah and why it, it, are the rates like the CL update, resale, and the why is not? Yeah, open? yeah, I know the answer to that. Yeah, so please, they, please enlighten me so I don't look dumb. Well, no, not a lot of, not everyone knows the answer. I literally, I talked to the Valve devs like at majors before, and they said that um, the reason that they leave it at sixty four tick is one cost. It, they have to basically double the amount of servers they have because it's double the amount of power. You know, like processing power. Yeah, so but that's, that's on the, the server main, side. It can yeah, still yeah, be yeah. changed on the client side what i don't get no so no, like they, on the server have... side it's 64 tick but if you add 128 on your computer and you join it's no, still the, ser be 64. the servers have to be enabled and that's fine. for 128 to work on your side like the server has no to... i know that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying oh. is that why isn't it by default when you open your counter strike 128 oh you, and you mean when you like... connect to the server it locks at 64 but at least when you're in oh the you're talking just like non-matchmaking servers like yeah at least when you create your yeah own server. Okay. like why isn't it one yeah yeah standard and then Valve i was talking about just matchmaking shit. servers like their their actual thing because those are going to be locked at 64 what seems like forever because they said they do stat they have a basically they can see your computer like every time you play counter-strike they know what parts you're running on yeah. Yeah. so they take like an average data on like all the people playing counter-strike and like 90 percent of the people that play counter-strike have shitty pcs that can't utilize more than 64 ticks so they're just like eh, fuck it no more uh <coughs> no no uh no 128 tick but at the same time having 128 tick will lower their frame slightly because it is more processing power but the game will still be smoother yeah it like, will it, it will still yeah, the guns will still better. shoot better just feels so, so much better. so like for me it doesn't i don't understand why they kind of don't have at least basic settings not servers like servers could lock them lower yeah. whatever, but like at least basic set settings so i agree like like interp and and uh yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, and like, just these, like, yeah. Just no, those, those, those should be default. They should be default because there's no reason. 
No, because I, I feel like you can even feel it. Like if you're in deathmatch and some bad person that was like 20 and 80 is in there. Like I always feel like their hitboxes are weird. Like I'm always like, <laughs> why are you t like? I don't know. Is your movement so bad that I'm missing, or like is your? I don't know. It's just it, it's like weird. even if it was a button in the menu, like uh, optimized for like good computers, you clicked on it, and then bam, it would be like. Because so many of my friends pick up CS and they're like silver, whatever, gold, whatever, and I'm like, did you even like change your like your basic stuff? Like, <laughs> and they're like, what they're do you mean? Like, they're probably you know, still just... playing with like 80 frames per second because they didn't lower their settings from high to like low, like every pro. Or like is, FPS yeah. max or, 30 because yeah. they don't know. Yeah. Like, and like you know, like, and I'm just like, wow, that's incredible that like, like the game comes. Like, I try to explain this to conference when I do pro tips. And I'm just like, first of all, when you pick up Gunner Strike, you don't just start playing. Like, <laughs> like it doesn't work that way. Every other game you can. And you gotta go through some files and start editing. <laughs> yeah. You have to do a lot. You gotta fix the game first, then you can play. You know, like, that's <laughs> yeah. crazy. So, like, oh my god, I'm so sad. Yeah, the setup <laughs> period for CS is a little too long. Like, if I don't have my con auto exec or configs just, like, on a dock or whatever, and I go to a LAN or something, I'm just like, shit, this is gonna I made a myself a short Earl to get my config anywhere in the world, even if I don't have access to my email, whatever. And I just type in my Earl that I memorized, because it's just, like, whatever, yeah. dot com. <laughs> and, like, I just freaking get my config and all my settings, because is just there's still no cloud system for it. Yeah, which is so weird because they, like <laughs> they have like a partial cloud system. They like like it will remember some things, it but will, like not as everything. Because they're only exact in that file, it doesn't matter anymore. It in do kills in Dota, if I went to my friend's computer, like across the country and i just loaded up dota on my steam account and literally i just played it like it was fun because i had all my settings were saved i don't understand why that's not in counter-strike like it's, it, it's it makes no such a weird and you know i understand that valve's uh yark really like everyone is a boss and no one is a boss like they have like their own you get like, to choose own, your own projects and you, things, you yeah. work on wh whoever you want but i don't think any of the original people are even there <laughs> the more the reason to hire people that care about counter strike and i never understood like you know there's probably i never talked to volcano about it but i never understood what sal the maker of cash if you're new um like never got in like for me uh, I, I i i don't like i don't get what they let riot pick up sal and well, I'll make the, the freaking competitive the, game. the thing that make the thing that makes no sense about it is that in Dota they have Ice Frog. And Yeah, Ice that's Frog, true. Oh they, my god, I never thought of that. Dota Ice Frog controls everything meta changes. He go he has a Skype, well maybe he has something else now. He, I remember he used to have a Skype where he had a bunch of pros. He would he would bounce ideas off them, he would come up with the changes. Sometimes they don't like them, but you know, it's up to him to get info and kind of make the best, you know, hero changes, map changes, no whatever. Shit. And he is the one that Valve actually can't override him. Like if he says something's gonna happen, it happens. You know, they get they can do all the items and the, you know, character model changes and graphical stuff by all, all like they can do whatever they want but in terms of like mechanical changes he's the main guy and counter-strike doesn't have a main guy they just like i feel like they just hop in a server and they're like all right we need to make the creek better and they're like does this seem good and they're like yeah this is pretty good but they don't realize that they suck so like yeah them, them shooting a gun is not the same as device using a gun you know what i mean or simple like they're gonna maximize it and if a gun is slightly broken i don't think they'll notice you know what i mean like they Dude, released they, a deagle that did 71 damage to any part of your body across any distance they released the r8 yeah they released yeah. the r8 there was the remember the auto shotty gun update you could literally pick mid as a as a ct on inferno and just auto shotgun people it was completely accurate you just murdered a whole team <laughs> but like, you know that okay so that's a game design um they do that in league as well that's a game design practice to make it just a little bit better than what you think the normal thing should be at first yeah they so release the new heroes a little over and then nerf it yeah. right like, and then yeah. you nerf it just a little bit but um i don't think cs is doing it the right way <laughs> Dude, i don't think they're conscious of them doing <laughs> that actually yeah. and i it takes me, them a long time to nerf those. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's yeah, like yeah. if they if they would nerf in like one to two weeks, I wouldn't care as much. You know what I mean? But like, 
they will leave things in for months before they actually do a change. They like, wait for how stats. long has the creed been broken, dude? It's been broken yeah. forever. They wait for stats. And, and, I, and some guy tweeted at me, and he's like, well, with the creed, you got to learn to play smarter and more positional, not take a disadvantage fights. And I'm thinking to myself, what if I'm retaking a fucking site? I have no choice. I have to go with yeah, this angle. Yeah, if like, you have no and then flat... You're, so like it, it works in some scenarios sure you can avoid a creek you don't have to fight them head on all the time but at the same time if if he's inferno at new box holding like back hole i'm fucked with an m4 <laughs> peaking that like like i have to hit an insane shot or someone has to molly him out like that's like the two options you can play like new box or behind fountain and just see all the way into ct and you have no <laughs> chance even with an op like you can't even really yeah. Flash him that well either because you can just see it. Ops are good if you're already posted, but Kriegs are better like at just moving. Like yeah, like like ops ops are definitely <laughs> like like you said if you're moving into where Kriegs already holding, the op is still a disadvantage most yeah, of the time. Just, like yeah. maybe on train from like T mid to Ivy like some super far distance the farthest ranges in the game. Like picking mid on Dust too, obviously. Like that's, yeah, that's I'd be really curious to see like. A fight of pros on Mirage A ramp, like ticket boots versus like peaking, <laughs> like Craig versus Op, like the like. I like bet you the stats. CT wins that most of the time, but I bet you, you the Krieg is a. I bet you the Krieg has a good chance though. Like I bet you it's closer than. I don't know because the Op is just holding right. You still have to move into him, so I feel like. But I don't. Know, I feel that damn like that guy that Opper is. Most of the time can be fucked. <laughs> it, yeah. it feels like if he takes one shot, like the thing with the Krieg is that if it's a Krieg holding from Ticket Booth instead of an op, that Krieg can kill three people yeah. sometimes, oh, yeah. and the op would only get one. And just like now, you have to find a way to re peek into that situation, which is just so hard. Yeah, you have to just throw a flash and jump up, take a pop shot, and like usually yeah. your pop shot is some dude diving because he's blind with his knife out, and like it's not an easy shot. It's like you know what I mean? Like, Tetris or yeah, he just yeah. he's strafing because you have to wait for the flash to blow up, so that gives them time to get to sandwich or like get to some cover, and 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 it, those shots are because I played as an opera before for many many months, so it's like I know how those things play out. They're not a creep right. will definitely get more. But you know what? Peaker's advantage. <laughs> Boom! Which is still a stupid Inception. fucking feature in this game. Like, um, you know, I wanted to bring back something that you said. Um, I think also one of the problem with with one of the problem. I don't want to say that Valve is a devil. Obviously, they created the best game, or somebody did and they picked it up. But um, is the lack of transparency. I think the lack of transparency is more frustrating than their choices. So yeah. if they were honest with the community or if they opened up more, or if we had someone to talk to except the Counter-Strike Twitter that replies once in a blue moon and you're like, what the hell? It's they mostly moon, just retweet me or like memes and just Yeah, I know. And like if we had like media a, managers. Like a, not a representative, but someone to believe in. Like, cause right now, like I even pros, like we all love the game, but we're all like, well, we love you, do something. Not like, you know, when Fortnite makes a change and people are just like hating on the game and blah, blah, but we are not hating on the game. We're just, we just want more from it. Like we want you guys to be there for us. I know you guys are doing great things. We, we just want more, you know? So it's, it's so frustrating. Like if they were honest and they were like, look, we're only like seven people on Counter-Strike we, take, we pick our battles. Right now, what we want the most is to secure X, which would be like, oh, maybe we're working on next year's majors, and that's our priority at the moment, and we don't have bandwidth to do anything else. Then I'll be like, oh, cool. Okay, like, I get it. They're only like five or six, but right now, it's, it's pitch black. We don't know what's going on. We have no idea. And unfortunately, it really saddens me. Yeah, it was really refreshing. I took a I kind of just played Overwatch for a while, and the way that, that Blizzard announced changes, even though they weren't always good, they had a they had that guy. I forgot the guy's name, but it was just like, like he would go, he would have a YouTube video, and he talk about here are the changes we're introducing in the latest Overwatch patch. This is why we're doing it. And then they would do that with Hearthstone also, where it's just like they would talk about all the changes, and it's like the community could be like, ah, like that's why, like okay, it's just it's so much. Even though sometimes people are like, this is so stupid or whatever it's like at least they explain themselves like at least yeah. there's yeah 
And, and it usually then... kills most of the angry people. Like most of them are can become comprehensive if you humanize a decision. And that goes back to like killing them with kindness. If you don't yeah. like something, but you hear the point. reasoning, you're just like, okay, I don't agree with it, but I understand it at least. So you're less you, you're less gonna go with a with a fork and try or pitchfork, whatever, and yeah. try to be like Oh my god, I hate, like witches die. Like, you know. Anyway, this is the worst example I could have ever made, but I hope you guys can understand. Uh, it, was, it was Jeff Jeff Kaplan. Jeff Kaplan was his name. Okay. Oh, but yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. That guy. That guy was just like he like people made memes about him and stuff because he was like, Yeah, we got we gotta wait on the word of Jeff Kaplan or whatever. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Like people were but yeah, and humanizing you know, it makes it I a lot feel better. that in that one little video that we got for the new project. X project project A. a project a. a I felt that I knew I learned more about that from like a dev development in one video than Counter Strike Go ever. Yeah, I, I have no ever. idea what, what their philosophy is with Counter Strike as a game at all. Ever, like, I don't know what it's supposed to be. Like, I know because people make videos like content creators, but I don't know from Valve's point of view what do they want Counter Strike to be. Other than one video of them at like a press conference, like like eight years ago or something like that, at like a GDC or a game developer conference or something, where they where they had a just like some PowerPoint thing about some of their decision making processes in Valve, and it was so long ago that I don't even know if they discarded kind of the philosophies behind what they said in that time. I've i the only Valve presentation I've ever seen at GDC as well was about how they made Left 4 Dead two. In Left 4 Dead, which was inspired by Counter Strike, because yeah. of the of the rhythm of curves of uh, intention, they applied it to Left 4 Dead. When you reach a certain peak in the zombies, they would give you a little bit more, and then they would give you a pause to relax. And that's how Counter Strike is. Every round is like a minute, forty five seconds, and then you have like high intensity, then a freeze time, then like a beginning of a round high intensity, like clutch, yeah. and tense, and you go back. Like this is how Counter Strike is made, and I also th think that's why it's one of the best. Yeah, game Overwatch out. doesn't really have that. It's just all go all <gasps> chaos, chaos, like... chaos, chaos. <laughs> that's yeah. a I, I, it's kind of. I actually like Overwatch. I think it could be a good game. I just think they need to tweak a couple things, like. The ults are all fucking stupid in that game. All right, every ult is just like brain dead. I hit it and like it's just easy and like and it's always so strong. It's just like uh, I have an aimbot now. Ult, <laughs> oh, you're all gonna, gonna die aim. in my my area. Yeah, it's just I don't know. It's like every fight breaks down in Overwatch to just like, okay, are we gonna use two ults or are we gonna use three ults? And it's like if they use three ults, it means we have to use three ults. We might have to use four ults. If we use four yeah. ults, we're fucked for the next fight. Or we'll don't win use this any fight because we're gonna lose this anyways. So yeah, don't just. Just, just and, like and, let and them just use wipe, all their ults, wipe, yeah, exactly. And then we'll come back and take it over with all our ults. And it's just, like, <laughs> it's it's just, just ult like, management. It's just so yeah. like oh, it's so I just, tedious. I just feel. I just imagine the commentators because I don't watch a lot of Overwatch. It's just really. It's also not a fun movie. game to watch. Yeah, and I just imagine the commentators going like three ults versus four, and just like only <laughs> saying that the whole time. No, they literally would always <laughs> talk about the casters. Would all, I casted Overwatch for like one of the ESL leagues actually for a bit and I like played it a lot learned the meta and stuff and like that's just like the caster analysis live is just like all right he's building up his ult all right they have his ult it's time to go now all right two <laughs> ults are they gonna let go yeah. of the third ult are they gonna use like the, the I don't know whatever <laughs> ult they want to use like <laughs> Jesus it's just... I, I feel actually like, like oh, playing the game man yeah. no I think it's fun but like yeah, I, just, it is, I, just, it is I, I always just felt like if you took out a lot of the ults and just had the normal skills then you have like a skill-based game like there's no more like there's so much less randomness like of like if you got your ult in time like there's sometimes where you play soldier and you get your ult super fast and like you just kill everyone because no yeah. one else has like a counter and it's just like uh, and that's why the new riot game fps comes in because it really seems like some sort of hybrid um so i i'm very interested they're like not doing offensive ults it's like every skill is defensive or tactical or something they said i think yeah and that's kind of a good take on it but i'm sure people will find ways to use defensive ults offense like oh, yeah. as a power like as a power spike in the round or something i'll say volcano is pretty smart so if they listen to him then he'll probably balance <laughs> things fairly yeah, oh my god, I feel that we didn't cover that subject enough. Why was Volcano not hired up? Ever!
Oh yeah. my god! It's so like intriguing. they didn't. It felt like they didn't want to hire any CS players. Like I know, and never, he, like, he was a programmer, game designer, made the best map in the game, and still was not good enough for Valve. What do you want, Valve? What do you want? Or at least, or at least have someone on retainer. Like you know what I mean? Like just have someone that you can like call upon that you maybe you pay him like not a full monthly salary, but you pay him like a bit, and then if he has to do work for you, like at least he's there to give input. Cause yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh my god, I just read chat for the first time and it's so crazy. Like, see, you're the first I'm the first female on the show and then I see this. Come on, Jiggy, I'm gonna kill you with kind Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reasonable. Oh, Reasonable chat. Hired Volcano if he was like a, a recent U dub uh comp side grad. That's like all he had to do. Because I guess that's kinda like how uh Valve hires just really watching Well, I mean not really. I mean just like just like all these places are like, you gotta get recent grads. They gotta do like diversity things. Vol Volcano would yeah. check off a box for diversity it if the would. recruiting manager in no, is interested. Just in general, life experience as a pro, especially a player like Sal. Like oh, Sal was was really skilled, but he was it, mainly smart as fuck. You know. And in terms of qualifications, he's like well beyond what this person should be at Valve. But I'm just saying, like the recruiting yeah. process is probably. So, so like, there was some so, like, point where, as a game designer, I was like, Valve would be my place to be, <laughs> and it's it's so sad to say, but the dream, the dream, like, it was it's been gone for a long time, a long time, because I don't know if I would fit with, you know, my my type of personality and play style and making sure that we're deaf for the community, we're like pushing things forward. It, it doesn't seem to fit like what they want, uh, at least in CS. So yeah, I, I I changed my mind. <laughs> I'm like that. Valve would not be where I want to be. Although CS is the game of my life. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, the problem with uh, modern game developers is that they're mostly about putting a churning a profit, right? And Valve's already churned a huge profit from CS, but they haven't really invested any of that. So it's kind of weird to try to understand where they're coming from with that. It's uh, pretty easy to feel burned, you know. Yeah, that's sad. And I don't want our game to slowly decline. I want our game to still be that beautiful amazingness that when you watch a close final of a tournament and you go like, or you play in it, you go like, this is the best game ever. But to achieve these moments, you need the rest now. You need the community. You need people on board. You need, you know, big... Like, well, you know, well, I know they don't like the international style, like big Dota, tons of prize money. So they didn't want to do it in Counter Strike, but they didn't really ever raise the prize pool that much for the growth of Counter Strike. Like, it's always been like kind of the same. And I'm, I'm not opposed to like the way they do it. Like, they want more of that circuit system, you know, where there's like tournaments every month and stuff and and the cousins of the international is like they have one big big tournament and then no one cares about dota for like a couple months after that because like that was that was it that was like the main thing yeah um, and i but, and i agree with that i love the tournament system i don't mind it yeah i just think like they need they should have like i know we have stickers and stuff but dude the amount of money they fund in dota is absurd like they could fund not as much as in Dota, but they could fund like with like uh, with like items, commendium type stuff in CS. They could fund a, a, a ton of money for for teams, for players to to make it tournaments and have bigger prize spots, which looks better for new players coming in. They're like, oh, this game has like 10 million first place. Like, I want to play this. You know that that does bring people in. I think. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, go ahead. I keep talking. So go ahead. No, it's or, or just the way they did with Fortnite, just having that ridiculous prize pool for that thing it gets headlines out there it gets you get on the news to be like, right? like yeah you get on the news you're like hey little hey johnny are you playing fortnite i just saw it on the news it's like imagine if you just had that for counter-strike or something because dota is so obscure to 99.9 .9 percent of the world's population that even though the prize pool is big no one's really like hey johnny are you playing defense of the ancients this moba from like like that <laughs> no one understands at all like other than hardcore players like that have played it like fortnite's just like shoot and build like it's just so and like counter strike it's even easier to access as a spectator than fortnite you just like shooting like that's it you're just shooting people but it also represents violence and that's something that yeah there's uh, 
doesn't Fortnite's fly in a lot of places. Yeah, but Fortnite is violence too. It's just that it's more graphic in Counter Strike. It's cartoon violence, and yeah, you know, Looney Tunes has been accepted. So <laughs> yeah, um, you know, one of the my a great feature that I think would be amazing for pros, players, the community, whatever. Let's say you just had official player profile on Steam, and um, Valve would create its own like. Uh, marketplace with the player directly which would be like oh if you put on like a like a tutorial on it like people can like buy it for like five cents i don't know like some kind of like um oh fantasy league you buy your players every time and then like you, they get a revenue away from it right away or um you know like you can sub to a player to support them even though they're not on the team and so they can practice like you know there's so many things you could do with just like an official player profile on steam for pros and semi pros even community members um for either content creator or for and just that would like like, I don't think that would be that kind of hard. And they would make money out of it. And the players would make content yeah, That's out actually of a it. pretty good deal. Like a mini Kickstarter almost, but not yeah. really. But like I, like, I like this idea. Like and, like, I think that's something that could be so easy to implement and so empowering for the whole community. And, like, you know, you you put this idea and you put something else and something, you know, whatever. But um, I think it fits with what they want too, which is they want people to interact with their workshop or have whatever they have. Um, oh my God, Valve, please, please, please. <laughs> Would be a nice please. idea, I think. Do you, know, you want uh, Do you want Valve to ever host like a like a girl tournament at a major? That's or... a very good question. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's necessary. We already have, like the goal of having female tournaments is to inspire, is to push diversity. And I major, I just mean, cause major is like the biggest platform, right? Like it's got the most viewers. So you, and then yeah. you already have all the casters and stuff there. You have like the computers, the stage and everything. Just the environment would be cool. Then you get stickers as well. Well, um, as a, oh yeah. obviously for a money aspect, you're going to make more. As a but player, like, of course I would fucking love it. But do I think we need it? is more like i'm being yeah. like kind of neutral as a player of course fuck having a sticker in the game that's fucking sick like it's so amazing just being a part of the game of your life like if i had like that's why if i had my little player profile and i could have my own like uh spray or whatever like that'd be sick like i'd be i would be playing cs in my streams all the time just to be part of my community and not try to play anyway you know that'd be so unreal but do we need it the female community i don't know but i do know that at majors there should be more female involved whether it's behind the camera in front of the camera um and we're starting to have more and more whether it's like uh potter and sue and like uh frankie and all these girls i don't, like i don't want to forget anyone there's so many more girls out there but um and we need to keep pushing to have diversity on these panels um and as well as behind the scene and like admins everywhere and we and like what if we had a player community profile and it wasn't just to make, like a player in the tournament but it was like you know maybe like a girl maybe potter maybe like you know like something to push diversity um but I don't think it's Valve's uh, priority. But I think it should be our society's priority. It's it's weird that back to Dota, they have a thing where if you're a fan of a caster, you can buy an item and get the autograph of the caster or panel member at the international on your game in-game item, so that you basically support that caster by buying their autograph. It's just like why is this no not, shit? Yeah, why is this awesome. not in Counter Strike? Like it's yeah like people will, <laughs> people like the thing is you have to roll roll for the item it's like a it's like buying a loot box or, or a, an opening a case but you are going to have their autograph on it so it's like certain autograph combinations with items are worth a lot because it's like that's their signature thing like their signature hero in dota has an item like and then it has like merlini's signature or something like that like it's just some person like what's really frustrating and i'm sure you guys might be in the is the dream of what Counter-Strike could 
Yeah. Right? Like, when you think about Fortnite, you don't think the dream of what Fortnite is, right? <laughs> when you think there's Sorry, a lot of games, you don't go like... For them. You know, but uh -oh. the dream of what CSGO could be because it has the community. Like, a lot of the games, people are fighting to get the community. We have the people. We have the community. We have the great <laughs> gameplay. Yeah, the gameplay is already awesome, <laughs> like Other than like, small things. We need whatever all the studios know how to do and that Counter-Strike is lacking. And what Counter-Strike is great at, all the other studios don't know how to do. It's so weird. It's so weird. And we do have a very loyal uh, fan base, like communities. Like some of these people have been playing for over 15 years. You know, like they've been around watching. Yeah, exactly. Like the game came out in what, 1999? Um, uh, and it's been popular the whole time. I don't know. That's, yeah. that's pretty <laughs> rare. Uh, like, how long have you been playing, guys? Both of you, or all three of you? I assume. Two thousand five. Uh, I think I got my Steam account two thousand seven. Yeah. It's, yeah. I started in CS:GO. I'm a pleb. <laughs> oh, a little plebarino. <laughs> I uh, I. So. In 03? Mm hmm okay. It's been a long, long time. time. I think Bonita I was. Bonita was when she was seven. <laughs> I think I, 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 I was at your first ESWC, Corey. I think so. Yeah, yeah, because it was first. in Paris, and there was always the girl tournament and the guy tournament there. Yeah. <laughs> and that, back then, for those that don't know, it was the World Cup of video games, okay? All yeah, it games. was actually like a big tournament. Yeah. It's, it was Dota, it was uh, Dota, CS, and then always like a couple of other. Uh, I don't. Did we ask it's like StarCraft. That? Yeah, probably. I think, it, I think it was StarCraft. We had Warcraft at some point, too, at ESWC. Anyways, it was pretty big. Uh, there was Quake, too. Anyway, mm -hmm. it was the... Every year, there was one tournament that everybody needed to go to. You met all the pros. Everybody knew each other. <laughs> it was a simpler time. <laughs> and the yeah, price pool was ridiculous. So, uh... Random question, not random, but a controversial question. Um, what do you think of transgender people playing in either side? Of um, the well, I mean, I have absolutely no problem with it, but I understand the debate. So I understand why it's debatable because let's assume that Counter Strike gives you. Uh, that your gender actually gives you an advantage because not right now we assume that it doesn't right that there's no physical requirements but there are scientific studies that shows that man has better reflexes which means in a reflex based game they would start with an edge you know so there are actual facts that shows otherwise about like spatial awareness and orientation and all these kind of things right uh, that's why, that could be one of the reasons why it's easier for men to pick it up. Uh, but, yeah, like, let's, let's assume that. Then it's kind of interesting. Then we can have a debate. But for me, what matters is what the person, what the person represents. So if they want, if they, they, if they are a woman, then I respect that. And they're a woman. And that's it. For me, there's no other question to be asked um i'd rather accept um in my community six new people transgender even if um it means me losing to them <laughs> or whatever because they're better uh because i i'm all about welcoming everyone and it doesn't really matter like especially in canada i don't know how it's going on in the west but in in quebec like the rules about gender are kind of crazy meaning like a lot of people don't identify themselves and whatever it's males, pretty good over here i mean i'm by vancouver <laughs> so people are pretty progressive like yeah there's a lot of like like people are pretty supportive of it i'm on the side of like i don't give a shit what you want to do you want to be a girl yeah. a guy like honestly i'm like you be you like i don't it doesn't bother me i don't get people that get offended by it um i think the, the determining factor for me with like counter strike would just be like if a guy is better than a girl like because i think if guys if there was science to show that guys are better than girls then i don't think trans girls should be able to play 
but mm. but if there's no difference, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like but, that that's for me. Like I don't know much about uh transgender, so I don't want to speak for whatever, but you know, you know, sometimes maybe biologically they they could be born male, but they would have the the chemistry of a female inside of them. That's why they feel female. Depends. So maybe they wouldn't have like the, you know, yeah, it I think gets it, really it depends complicated. When, it, it depends when they transition, I think, on those type of things. Like if you – because they can stop puberty now, right? So like if at 9 or 10 years old they stop your, your actual development from like going through puberty and then you just transition to become a female, you're going to have a lot less of the – like the male char- characteristics come over. So you're going to be a lot more – like a female i know that sounds kind of bad but you know you know what i mean like yeah. it, you're gonna have less testosterone running through your body for years you're gonna have like less of the male dominant hormones in your body so like in 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 like strength sports olympics powerlifting all the stuff there's like all this outrage because they're like they don't they banned trans people from competing um, they do well, the reason for it is because a lot of these ones are drug tested meats, right? So in order tra- to transition, you have to be on testosterone replacement therapy as a as a girl becoming a guy. Or if you're a girl become a guy becoming a girl, you have to be on estrogen, you know, you have to be taking these extra supplements. So all of these are banned. So it doesn't matter if you're if you're oh, a guy okay, or okay, a girl, okay. you just can't be taking these things. It's it's irrelevant, you know what I mean? And people get, oh, we gotta let them compete. It's like, well, if I had a testosterone deficiency and I needed testosterone replacement therapy, I can't compete. I'm not allowed. So as a guy, I can't even compete in the guy one if I'm on that. So it's like mm. it's not really discriminating, it's just no drugs. <laughs> like they don't want anyone to be yeah. taking any performance. I mean, it, so it, it makes it easier <laughs> for them to handle all that thing. But yeah, but people I, still got like all like bent out of yeah. shape. But um, in Counter Strike, it's a, it's less about physical, so it's a lot more just whether or not people think there's an advantage, right? So, um, I, I don't know. I could, I mean, I would love a study on this because a lot of the greatest women players are transgender. Um, whether it's in Street Fighter or Starcraft or um, in other games. And that would be amazing to see a study on that, but that was never going to happen. Yeah, because like but... part of me, most most of me is like, I don't think there's anyone being like, I'm going to transition to be a, a female so I yeah, can just go compete in a girl that, tournament. That's like sometimes that's, a weird argument that comes. That's up. Like, kind of ridiculous to me. That? Yeah, you know, no like that's a ridiculous that. argument. So like, I would never want to shun someone, but at the same time, you want like fair competitive play, right? You don't like if there's an advantage somewhere. It's just like, you know. You take half Thor, he's 440 pounds, 6'8", just a monster, and you transition him to be a girl, he's still going to be stronger than every other girl on the planet. Like, <laughs> like there's been uh, MMA fighters that transitioned to be like a guy to a girl, and they literally caved in a girl's skull. She, like, literally smashed it in. Like, you, <laughs> like I said, with physical sports, it's way different. But, like, it, it's still, like, sketchy to me. <laughs> like, yeah. I think that I'm not educated enough on the topic to have any other opinion than accept them. <laughs> I just wanted I, your opinion because you're a girl, right? So, like, yeah, you, no, like no, no, no. just because, like, um, you, you would be the one that they could be on your team. They could be, you could be playing yeah. against them. Would I it think... make you feel worse losing to one or, like, like no. would you pick one up? I actually lost to um no I didn't. I don't know. Anyway, I I no respect them and I think they're welcome in in the female tournaments and if they don't want to play in the female tournaments because they don't care for it then I'm also all for it. Like I say it all the time. I ex- I agree with the girls that don't want to play in female tournaments. I'm mm-hmm. fine with it too, you know? That's because it's not for them. They have other ambitions or you other played goals. On that league team way back right <laughs> at the start the start i did guys <laughs> i played in ESC season 12 pro yeah with oh. roca i don't remember who else was on the team i think uh, there's roca right Tyre, roca jason r jason r and that's before he banned thoughts from his stream i guess <laughs> 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 i know honestly one day I figured out I was blocked and I was like, why? And then I saw him at an event and I'm like, why? I thought we were friends. And then he was like, no, no, we're chill. 
It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> We're chill. And I'm like, okay. Um, but yeah, no, Jason, I don't, um, there was a guy, uh, a, a guy with a W. Oh my God. I forgot his name. Anyway. Um, Win, no. Winrar. Yeah. Oh my God. That's it. Winrar. Um, and Roka quit after like two weeks. Um, but I loved it. I loved it because within the team, it was one of my first male team where when they decided to play with me, it didn't matter that I was a girl. And that never happens. Um, and I, that was a time I, I really wanted to continue competing and kind of see us female kind of died for a couple of months slash year because there's no more female tournaments and we didn't have any team or whatever, any sponsor or org. So pe girls went back to work. <laughs> That's really much what happened. Um, Cause there was no streaming, whatever. And I, it was the beginning of it. And I just wanted to keep, comp like, I love CS. Um, well, I feel, I feel like you were also one of the first girls to stream a lot. Like you, yeah. you, you had like a lot of viewers back before there was a lot of people even streaming. Yeah, which I'm not sure because because you you still stream, but not as much as you did back. I almost never stream, but I used to stream almost every day. Like I I reach a really good amount of viewers at some point. We're like one k concurrent, and and sometimes five. Like it was pretty good. Um, <laughs> and that was in 2014, 15, which is 13, 15, 14, 15, which is like a long time ago. And I always see these people I I was streaming with now freaking gods of streaming and i'm like what if <laughs> shroud <laughs> yeah i'm like what if i never motherfucker saw over here on mixer i know like shroud summit even ammunition like all these people i'm like oh my god what if i never stop anyway so i'm trying to slowly stream again just because i think it's the best way to interact with your community anyway so um i just wanted to keep competing and be the best i can be so i didn't want to stop competing for me there was never a moment in my life I, I told myself I'm gonna stop playing CS. Even today, I'm not on a pro team. I've retired. I'm still. I don't want to stop playing CS. I can't. Like I can't make an announcement. I'm retiring. It's not possible. It would break my own art. I can't. Like it's just such inside of me. Most than half of my life has been about this game, and I just love it so much. So at that point, I didn't want to quit. So I was trying out for every main team. There was no premiere i tried out for every wait maybe there was premiere anyway i tried out for ed, every team i could that were looking for people um i remember rush <laughs> i was trying out for a main team and it was between me and rush the final two and eventually they picked up rush uh i always thought it's because he had a penis but now that he's so good maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> he um, might have deserved it too <laughs> he might have deserved it too but i was like i have more experience than rush back then uh like this is unfair i can do this um and i think at the time it was pretty decent but yeah i played in pro league uh at the was it i by pirate years or was it before that i don't remember i, I remember pirate playing was pretty person. early on they were I remember playing versus Jordan. So I think I played versus you. Did I play versus you? Probably. I mean, I would have been Cloud9 back then. Complexity, um, Quantic, it. Time. Rare form. Uh, League history. Is that it? Ooh, season 14 invite. Maybe not. Maybe I can't see this if I'm not logged in. Oh, my God. Like a cash Ooh. game or something. 2013, Rare form had Miss Lord. <laughs> yeah, that was good times. That was good times. <laughs> I still think to this day, if I invested, like the amount of time invested Counter Strike then, if I still invested in it, I could be a good player even with my age. But the reality is, is I'm not there in my life. Anymore. I don't want to sacrifice everything that I sacrificed before. Well, I, I've always said that I don't like a lot of people say like, "Oh, this player is getting old. He's getting phased out." I've never thought it's like a an age thing i've always thought it's like a life thing yeah. where it's like when you're low mid 20s you might not give a shit about having a girlfriend you might not give a shit about like you know doing family events as much like the chilling going out with your friends and stuff but after like five seven ten years of just playing video games for 12 hours a yeah. day i think people slowly start playing less like even they might even be playing with like they're playing all their team practice they're playing like deathmatch but that little bit of extra time you're putting in when you're 17, 
when you slowly are phasing it out, when you're 29, 30, 31, you're being healthier, going to the gym, you know what I mean? All these things add up to little bits of your time being taken away. And dude, I'm telling you, when I was fucking 19, it was literally, I wake up, I go downstairs, I make a fajita <laughs> filled with cheese and like pre-fried beans and sour cream. I eat that shit. I like go in my room and I grind for like nine pugs straight. Then I get like a pizza and then I eat that and I watch like a TV show or a movie. And then I play fucking 12 more hours of counter show. You know what I mean? Like it's just, yeah. that's all you do. And it's really hard to do that forever. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It and, weighs on you for sure. And I do believe that we haven't, uh, <laughs> sorry. I just saw, I know we're not supposed to address the comment, but someone said, so Rush stole a major from Miss Harvey. And I thought it's fucking awesome. Uh, uh, no, he didn't. Okay. Uh, major but, champ, Miss Harvey. <laughs> yeah. Could have uh, been. Could have been. What could have been? been a 2-0 instead of a 2 <laughs> yeah, exactly. We would have cleaned him up on Mirage. It wouldn't have been it. Yeah, there would have been no OT. Um, but I do agree that we don't know how to efficiently practice yet. Um, and still to this day, professional players um think that well, not all of them, but like the amount of hours you play represents like your strengths in the game or at least the amount of practice that you have. And I don't think it should be the case. It's you still need to invest that grind that you're talking about. But I don't think we, I think that mental fatigue is a thing. And I think that being efficient while you're not in mental fatigue is more important than the number of hours you, you put in the game. And I think that's something no, that I, I I 100% agree. I think like teams like Astralis that have like these sports psychologists, these nutritionists and these coaches are are having them play a lot smarter like from the last time I've talked to people on most top European teams excluding before majors and stuff where they're always going to ramp up their hours like everyone's always going to play a bit more before like the important important tournaments but just like a general practice day for most teams would be like you get up you have like an hour maybe 40 minutes death match aim bots things then there's like an hour review usually like strat session with your coach and your strat caller three scrims hour break three scrims you're done like and then they usually don't even play that much after you only play fpl or whatever if you want to like not because you feel like you have to and uh i think that leaves like a team like astralis that uses so much teamwork and stuff like that it's less important that they're just hitting crazy shots mm -hmm. and more important that they're focused and they're not making any mistakes and they're not learning bad habits. Um, but I, I also do think you do benefit <laughs> from playing a lot when you're younger because that's I how you so kind of, I think that's how you kind of get up to that level. And then it's more about maintaining the level without like burning yeah. out. For me, it's the amount of hour you play makes you in, like, it's like a like a, let's say a curve lower a line, right? But if you had from the beginning, the best practices in the coaches, you, you would not need all this time to reach there. You could do it right here, right? So at some point, if you're already here, like you're mentioning, it's about grinding that extra step and maintaining. And that's why you don't need 12 hours at that point during your day. It's more about efficiency <laughs> and being uh, productive. Um, and because your, your brain is a muscle. It is a muscle, and um, actually, I, I don't really know if it's a muscle, but I compare it to a muscle. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, someone confirm it's a muscle. So yeah. um, you just like anything in life, honestly, if you play too much Counter Strike, at some point, it doesn't. It, it's you get stagnant, and if I think that pro players uh, in other sports, if they go play other sports, it makes them better in their sports. So there's also like doing something else will make you better in the game um you can't dwell on things too much right like if you like in bodybuilding when people are prepping for a show they have to diet a lot and the guys that just lock them in a room and lock themselves off from a room they don't talk to their friends because like to be honest it can be very easy to do that because you're on such a strict diet you can't really go out to eat like you can't really like do that. i've done this shit in the past too where like i'll avoid going out just because it's like easier like it's just it really is like it's just easier to just eat your own food and never do anything a lot of them get like anxiety before shows and stuff because they're so fun. Like all they're doing, all their focus, their whole life is on this one thing and they don't have any fun. 
And if you don't have any fun, it just, it makes you miserable. And you're always going to perform better in anything. If you're having fun, like job, sport, any, 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 any aspect of your life, like you have to find some enjoyment and you might love playing counter-strike, but if you're playing 15 hours a day, you're going to not enjoy it as much. Like there was a point with me. I remember I was coming on to practice when I was on Spice where like, I didn't really want to play. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I literally told my team, I want to take a week off and they like, everyone agreed. And they said it was fine because there wasn't anything like big happening. And when we came back, I fucking wanted to play again. You know what I mean? Like I, I was like, I like wanted to like watch them as I want, you know, and everyone's going to find a different balance of like when that happens or like everyone's going to make one guy nine hours might be too much. One guy seven, you know, but even, even a liege the other day was saying that like, he, you know, he just likes to play his team practices and some DM and log off. Like, I hate pugging. Well, actually, I love pugging because that's all I can do now. But uh, like when I was in a team, that was my biggest problem. I needed to rank more hours, and all I wanted to do was team prac, that match demos, and I did not want to pug. So I didn't know. <laughs> like, I, I retake is okay. I like retakes, but um, god damn it, pugging made gave me so much horrible habits. Then no, I it do does that because pugging even. Even when I got my contact for my eye and I started playing again, in the first like week, I was like, "Man, what the fuck's this guy doing?" Like, for and my skill wasn't <laughs> saving me, you know, because like my skill was so bad from like not playing that like normally, you know, the guy runs through smoke, you just kind of kill him. But like I was just getting caught off guard, and then once you like adjust to the pugs, it's okay because you're just like you're always expecting someone in lower beyond us to. You're like my opera definitely just didn't see him. Somehow. And like <laughs> yeah. he's just down there. Like there's so many things you take for granted when you play with a team. You're like, oh, lower's fine. Like they'll let me know. And then in a pug, you just get to die in the side. You're like, what the what the fuck? Like, did you? No one was spotting mid, and they're like, oh my bad, dude. And you know, there's so many little things. Like the, the way that you play pugs is so much different. Like, yeah. yeah, I I uh I had one month where I actually won the RWS prize for pugging, and it was like my worst league season in MDL ever. Like I I felt like my mechanics were so freaking nutty but for some reason it just developed the worst habits i think or something i just had a completely different mindset when i was playing actually no fucking way. that's amazing <laughs> no look that's awesome i've like you know you well you know it's you, kind of sad actually well, no because it, ex it it's exactly what I, what I what most people think but we can't we can't prove it that pugging doesn't make you like a good are we good rank the, or the one good, thing is that, yes so that's why yeah. it doesn't matter like no, it, it doesn't exactly but, matter but, but i think it's good for new players you know what good, i mean like, yeah. like if, you, if you have no counter-strike background like you're just coming in and like you do need to play something like most people don't get to just join a team and then play six scrims a day like that like like i had one guy yeah. who i was talking to the other day where he was just like uh you know people tell me that pugging is bad and i'm like yeah, because they're assuming that you're on a team. They're assuming you have another place to play. But if you have no other way to play the game, puggings are like your next best option. Because like eight hours of deathmatch, eh, it's not beneficial. Like, um, so I agree that like for someone like Miss Harvey, for me, pugging all day is bad. Like we have we have the Counter Strike knowledge already. Like we don't need to like play pugs to grind it. And I also tell people like anyone that's watching that like maybe you like your main source of playing is pugs is like to have a goal in the pug. You know, like you don't yeah. necessarily need to win all your pugs. Just be like if you're the guy that plays banana on Inferno on T and CT, then on T side just work banana every round and just try different things. Like try to. Like find out your limits on banana. Don't do stupid ass shit just to try to get a gay kill, but like try something like a molly, a flash, like throw a weird smoke, like on CT, try to practice banana control. You know, if, if that's something you're bad at, like try to do something. It's not always perfect, but it's better than being like, Oh, I play B. I'm just going to rush holes every round and like Meg in there. You it's know, not like, even, <laughs> it's not even that bad to try really dumb things in pugs because like, then like you could put, like you said, push yourself to the limits or whatever. It's just like, just try. I mean, like, smoke their molly, run through yeah, I was just, it. Just I, was, see what I was thinking, like, like absurd just, stuff, like, just, like, walking through a smoke completely, like, stupidly, where, like, there's yeah. zero chance. Run that, through like, two mollies to try to yeah. get to them and hit one headshot and then try to, like, <laughs> die with it. Yeah. No, yeah, I, like... I, I agree with your point. I guess I was too extremist in my comment. Uh, I do agree. Um, uh, but I think not everyone can understand when they get the bad habits. Even pros don't understand. 
No, I agree. I mean, Skadoodle used to always say he does, he doesn't pug or rank S or FPL because he says it just makes him give him bad habits. He's like, I just do things I wouldn't normally do when I'm playing, and he, he would notice it, so he didn't want to play them. And it's just like, I think some players that are really skill-based, like simple, I don't think it matters as much if they have a slight bad habit because their aim bails them out. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. and, and and one of their strengths is their aim, so playing more is their is their to their benefit if you know what yeah. i mean but like most people can't get caught in the open and get three headshots like that's not realistic for most people like i think a lot of people look at nico they look at simple they look at these all-stars and like that's who they want to emulate that's probably not who you are because if that's who you are you don't need to be watching a podcast learning how to get better like you're already good you're already gonna succeed you know what i mean like is these that, people is are gonna this succeed podcast, is that what this podcast is supposed to be we're supposed to teach people how to get better <laughs> <laughs> i mean you know it's it's like usually usually people that are trying to get better watch as much counter trick as they can like they just okay. they'll listen to thing you know what i mean like they just immerse themselves i'm not saying it's like a learning podcast but like <laughs> but generally you know like yeah succeeding in pugs is just not correlated okay one of the things that i did when i won the prize is i rifled almost only but for my team i i opt so it ah. just obviously wasn't helping me at all like doing yeah. that it bare it helped like first bullet accuracy when i pistoled but like i'm not learning how to opt better or like how come you didn't opt in the pugs you don't get the most art ups like that. I was trying to oh. win that knife. I was really trying to win. I wanted that knife really badly. And I was because I, I started the month with like five pugs, like 22 art ups. And I was like, OK, I'm going to go for it. I'm really going to go for it. I so I just was like, pugs. I'm only. I win more pugs when I op, but I get way more kills when I rifle. Just yeah. because when I'm opping, I can really just punish stupidity a lot easier yeah. for me, at least. Because like some guy swings off cat, he's dead. But like you can hunt ecos like fucking crazy yeah. with like an AK or a Mac Ten or something. And like realistically, a lot of your art is going to come from shitty kills. Like like that just be unless you're like straight carrying the pug, like you you get a big benefit from getting, you know, two ecos here, two there. And like, yeah, you know exactly. that match we played last night? I got zero eco kills because I was fucking off it. So like, yeah, your, your Artems were, you had like, well, actually you ended up with the second highest Artems in our match I saw, but like, you had yeah. very few, your ADR was hella low. Your ADR was yeah, comparatively. Yeah, just because like, like, you know, when you're opera, you kill a guy, he had 50 health. So you just get like a 50 damage off that kill. Right? Yeah, like, exactly. It's not, it's not yeah. you're not going to get, like you said, like, opping is super important, but if you're not simple or like device, you're probably not going to be like the, or Zybu, you're not going to be like the star of, of your team prop. Have you guys ever discussed, um, cause you know, ESCA used to change a lot of their stats and whatnot, but it's been pretty stable the last, uh, years. Have you ever discussed on the show? Like, how do you quantify skills? Because RDub was trying to help with like support players a little bit, but it's still oriented towards ADR a lot, like in the amount of kills. Um, how do you... I think it's hard to quantify, right? Because like, yeah, right? If, you, if you if you play Beyond Inferno and you're really good at delaying and staying alive and getting like one kill and then your team comes with a retake i i don't and but your other teammates get the rest of the four kills like you 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 literally won them the round most likely but there, it's yeah, hard to like stats. give that person there, it's hard to like like an analyst after a game could probably be like oh you know zipnix played b on inferno so well like it was the reason liquid lost he might have only had 12 kills but you know what i mean like it's hard so how do you how do you help these kind of players <laughs> show their value because right now i think that if you're a fragger it's really easy to get spotted um that how do you help the players that have other uh that are can't be defined by stats show their <laughs> importance it's it's like win winning of. winning winning is winning was what gives them but you like always lose. At the I, I think I think if, it's yeah. I think it's reverse. I don't think you need to show. I don't think you need them to have a stat to show the worth. I think you need the teams picking people up to realize what they need. Because yeah. like realistically, if you're making a team or you're replacing someone, you need to think right. Like mo like if Liquid's replacing Twist, you don't get someone that gets. Like a, like a support player, you know, like you need another fragger to replace your fragger, right? Like if you get if you replace an opper, you get another opper. Like, um, but a lot of times in like the MDL level, the main level, they just look for stat patterns. Like they're just yeah, like, oh, yeah. he's got insane stats, he's got insane stats, he's got insane stats. Not realizing that like 
only one or two people can realistically have good stats in a season, right? Like you, you can't just stack skill and expect everyone to, to be good. Cause most of the people that have good stats play somewhat similar. I think like they play like yeah. similar aggressive roles, like yeah, um, first going second for, and entry rifle. Yeah. CD side. They're going to be looking around mid on Mirage for kills, like that kind oh, of yeah, stuff. So you got to yeah. think like if, if you have two good fraggers, get someone that will, that will buff them. You know what I mean? Like get get someone that's good at playing small sites, like be on Mirage, be on Inferno, good at delaying. He might not have the same insane stats, but I guarantee you, you get someone like, I mean, he's such a good player that it's hard to say, but like someone like Crims wouldn't be a team's first pickup back in the day. Like but when Fnatic was dominant, like you would have picked up Flusha, Olaf, or JW over him. Like back, back when they, like now everyone knows Crims is fucking insane, but like back then... <clears throat> Crims was like the fourth best player on the team, but his value was so fucking high that like you couldn't even measure it because he was just playing B on Inferno, getting one or two every single time. Like <laughs> Olaf is coming in there, running through smokes and like finishing them off, but like and and making the all star plays and highlight reels and getting all the kills. But um, I think people need to just be more aware when they're picking people up, like what they need, and, and actually, so, and actually watching demos of people. Like it's not that hard to see how someone plays. You just download one of one of their match demos and check, and just see, like, oh, does this guy play smart? It's usually pretty easy to check. You don't have to spend an hour doing it. So should we? So I totally agree. So, but at the same time, then if it's not stat, how do we show the value of like the roles? Because I know it's like a lot more simple at the high, but like, how do we show MDL yeah, the importance yeah. of roles? And should we put more emphasis in um, when we talk about when we have these podcasts and when we have um, content like the talent? Should they put more emphasis on the other roles and try to lift up like the community? I, I do to think the analysts should give more props to some of the the smarter players in maybe maybe show a highlight that isn't just a guy getting three yeah. headshots like maybe you show zipnik's playing on ramp dropping a molly like shooting someone through smoke and then like falling back and surviving and just showing like how much delays happened it doesn't have to be like every match or every single game but like they should like there's some times when you know a player just won around by like delaying for so long like like he just did such a good job just Bird. Or just staying alive, like on a pinch. Like if you're the one guy, if your team is pinching like two from one area, one from the other. If you're that one guy coming from the other area, don't just wide swing, but just like kind of jiggle to keep that pressure. So the guy that's getting pinched on the site has to look two different directions at the same time. Just like that. That's just so. Yeah, bad. that's, that's actually really alive. annoying. They're, like yeah. even if you're in deathmatch, you probably felt it. Where like a dude peeks you from cat on us two at mid, and then a dude peeks you from mid door and lower, and you're but they all go back in. To you. <laughs> yeah, like, you don't know who's gonna fight like, you. Your crosshair's like flying around, and you're like, "God oh, fucking damn it!" You <laughs> like, but, um, too much teamwork, randos. Yeah, but then, uh, I, yeah, I do think, and like, even just showing like something really basic, like uh, in a in a highlight would probably work. Was like if you're playing Beyond Mirage, and the guy sees a smoke come out of the wall, and he drops like a molly. And then he throws a flash in the molly, and then he smokes the molly, and then he throws another flash, and then jumps up and gets on like on the balcony, hides and gets a kill. Like showing that like protocol of like how he slowed them down. It's a little bit harder when it's like when it's like spread out. You know what I mean? Like he throws a molly, and then like they're delayed, and then he throws, and then he goes and hides somewhere, and then drops a smoke. But like if he if there's ever a succession of nades just thrown in a row to delay, it's pretty easy to clip, and it takes like twenty seconds. Yeah. I would tend to agree with that. I think that the flashy plays are what matters, but um, I think we need to support our support players. <laughs> yeah, and then just some anchors. people don't even. Yeah, anchors are just such an important role. Like, they're it's such a hard spot too. They can you literally just lose your team around? <laughs> like, that's yeah. like, like if you're playing lane on Inferno and you die you didn't instantly lose your team in the round. Like you might have, but like, it's not usually lost in one second. The pit guy's still there. The opera's over at arch and he's able to like, kind of off that lane cross, give the B time. They can delay a bit. You know what I mean? But like, if you're the main B guy and you die, like they're just so in the site. And it, they're in, if they're in construction before your team even gets to CT, the round's over. Yeah. yeah you may as well save. 
So that's where you learn on, our, on this podcast. Go save. <laughs> and that's why you guys learn. <laughs> I do think not enough people save enough. That's like something yeah. that, mo- that a lot of like MDL teams, even pro teams, they don't they don't like to like give a round for free. But if you can go and save four guns, that's another free round, right? I agree so much, and I do believe that in scrims, uh, MDL teams, because I'm working with MDM DM teams now against and with, they always go for it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's a two four. Yeah, like. like it's like, are they serious? It's, it's kind of, I feel like it's almost like they'd rather not deal with the pressure of having to do economic management in the next round. Because it's like, oh, we saved two guns, but our other players are broke. Like, do we buy? Do we save? How do we? Because thinking of the play you want to make with like two M4s is really hard sometimes. How are we going to use these two M4s in the next round? Like, everyone else is going to save. Like, how? Because like with an op, it's easy. You're just like, go for a pick, you know? But like with rifles, it's like... How are we going to get these two M4s involved on CT side without just revealing where they are and immediately? I think as long as you got an op and two rifles, you can buy every round, like on both sides. Like it's just totally it to, to buy. So if your opper is smart and he's able to survive, um, yeah, you, should be able to, you should be able to buy a lot. I think it gets a little bit dicey, like you said, with two rifles only because it's like, yeah, you could buy, but if you lose this round, then you're full saving. And it's yeah. like, you could just save and win the next one. And it might be better just to put the two rifles together and hope that you can kind of grind out a lucky round. So, but the, there, there's a merit to both saving and buying there. But when you have an op and two rifles, you should just buy. Like, every single time. Like, mm-hmm. just yeah, like three. There's, there's not a reason not to. Yeah, three alive, for sure. I would agree. And I also think that sometimes people save, but they don't save. <laughs> Like, I see that yeah, a lot. The, yeah, the, like, half buys and shit. Like, so, like the, no, no, it no, no, literally No, no literally what I mean is that they, they save, like, it's a 2v4, and they're like, oh, let's save. And then they leave, right? Save. But then they kind of still... Kind of fight. Kind of fight, fight. And then one yeah. of them die. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's stupid. I think sometimes an opera has, like, an almost undiable way to just kind of watch for it easy exit and run off but everyone else should just run away <laughs> like yeah and-, and like i feel that this doesn't happen as much in pro teams but right underneath it like right at semi pros and everything else down it's like like you decide to save leave safe like that's the it's- most important thing that's not your objective yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. You know, it's because it. they think they think they can get one free kill and then it just pads their stats a little bit and you think it's safe enough that you can just maybe get one maybe even two sometimes like but it, like I, that's not i like, think there's winning there's only one winning. scenario where it's sometimes good to just be like the guy Contain? that tries to get exits yeah because yeah, like if you're winning like seven to zero and you know they're low in money like yeah and you have a don't lot of money, just kill them all you know just like just don't let them save like but then you're not saving all... you're contained yeah no no it is di- <laughs> it is different but like just discerning when to do that yeah can be like, uh some of the lower level teams don't make the call like if i'm ever alive and i hold tab and i know we can for sure buy and they're for sure broke next round i'm gonna kill them all like mm-hmm. like not stupidly like running the site just hold the exits and and if you got a chance to kill them kill them i'm not i, I think some people do the contain thing like i have to like throw my life away to the kill like you don't have to do something stupid to try to kill them just if they give you the kill kill them if not what let them live you know it's just and i feel that's why communication in cs is so important but also defining what specific words mean so like maybe for you contain means x but for your teammate contain means y and then whenever you use contain there's a disconnection between what it means for them and what it means for you but if you do server time and uh theory crafting and then you talk about these things together then you reach a consensus which contain for everyone means that so you just have to say guys container guys we're exiting here or guys save means save you know or you know um and i think that's where uh a lot of people underestimate communication at a lower level of cs so you speak french and english do you find it faster to communicate in another language like do you think english is a disadvantage because i've had some of my teammates say yeah. it to me before that absolutely. they think like english is slow I, absolutely i think french is faster And also, I think that me speaking French is faster. So, like, sometimes my brain doesn't, 
like I want to say something and then it, but it's common for anyone that's bilingual. So if you speak Spanish or whatever, there's some things that just go out better in a specific language and it's normal to blank but, out. But if you were, if you words. were fluent with no delay in both, do you still, do you think French is still quicker? What like if it? you didn't have to ever, like ever think about, like if you were just to call, like, I think we should save, do you think it would come out quicker in French versus where? Yes. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's what a lot of people have told me is that they just think that other languages communicate just like quicker and more efficiently. Well, first of all, I, I, French, uh, Quebec, not every Quebec language. French, but... Quebec French as a slang where you can you you combine every word in like two words into one all the time. So and then French as a language, uh, it's like a song when you you talk between words. So every word you finish with this the word and you're already saying the next one so in english it's more like this but in french it's more like this when you speak you know like that's how yeah. i could explain it the best that it's it could. more like like more like a flow to it right? yeah so that's why we say french is like singing while um while uh english is more like that that like that that I was actually really interested in learning Portuguese to just see some of these like POVs of uh, like Brazilians play because the way they calm like when like when LG slash SK were at their peak, every 2v2, 3v3 was played perfectly. And I have to think that part of it is because their comms were just so fucking fast and good, like all the time. And when that team started becoming like hybrid North American or like like American, like Stewie and Tarek were on it, just knew that team was going to suck in all these like late round situations. And they literally lost so many clutches, like so many 2v2s, 3v3s that are just uncharacteristic for their personnel. You could just probably blame it on communication. And just like when it's all Brazilians, they just, it's like, they're when so I, good in those. When situations. I listen to the French from France teams, this is, this is where I learned the most about communication. Their communication, and I, I feel it must be like that in Swedish. I don't know why I would assume that, but. Like, I remember the first time I saw a French team, um, like at a higher level, CS level, I think it was 2013 ESCA uh, finals in Dallas or something. It was the first international ESCA finals where you could sit behind the teams and actually kind of hang. Um, and I remember at the time, it wasn't very games. It was already whatever they were. Um, Envy? Envy, maybe? Yeah. And oh my God, they taught me so much about little things like one word to explain x and y and z or um there's this french player that taught livid that and that they use and it's amazing when they want to peek something together as a team i don't know if you guys do that now in pros i i don't hang out with pros as much anymore so i don't really know but um for example uh french people will say ping pong so the first oh they do that they, they do that on pong. rogue i know that i know that so, when Nico was playing for them they did that yeah, so that's apparently very French. Uh, so they'll say like, "ping," and then this, when the second person is ready, they'll say, "pong," and then they swing. So they yeah they can like the first person will swing wider. So they'll say "ping pong," and they swing on pong. So uh, and they do that in the army with the snipers. Um, whenever someone is like looking and the other person has to shoot, um, the person looking orientates, and then the person shooting, uh, they both get ready, and then one person says. I'm ready. And the other person said, now, um, it's the same thing in the army. It's just like, and it's, that's, I don't know if they do that in my own language, but I know they do friends and that's one thing. And so like, for me, I, I think I learned the first I'm flashing bang. Flash, bang. Yeah. I heard the first time was like over 10 years ago as a French player that did that. So I think they do have an edge in communication. Um, no, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. I hadn't actually heard about ping pong. I know, uh, on some of my past teams, we would say like face. And if, as soon as someone said that, it just means swing, like just peak, like the mm -hmm. same angle. But like, we didn't have that second, like confirmation, confirmation. It was just like, uh, but a lot of times we, but a lot of times it would be like, get ready face, you know, like there'd be like yeah, something yeah. said like a little bit before. So the other guy's not just like, Oh, oh shit. Like <laughs> I have to peak. But like, that's what I meant. It was like, I never felt any of my teams had like perfect comms, although like certain ones would be, better than others just more efficient some people just don't even talk but <laughs> that's yeah, a, another yeah. issue entirely <laughs> but yeah I, i'm very interested in calm uh 
I did, like I said, I did this army thing recently and they taught me like s- things that we do in CS all the time that you, you do out of best practice, but nobody really taught you like, you know, it should be that way. And then in the army, they really studied it. They live like real life situation with it. And then we apply in the game and I'm just like flabbergasted. Oh my God, we do that well, I'm too, sure they have way more right? efficient ways in the fucking army, <laughs> you know? Like they, but, you know, but you know, a lot die, of, so they, I did. So I did a training course Swing. of two days of clearing the room, which is exactly like executing on a bomb site. Like it's pretty much the same. And it was fascinating mm-hmm. how much of the good practices in CS is the same in the army, except they don't get a second chance. So if someone doesn't do their job, they're dead, right? So, but in CS, it's a little looser. Oh, I didn't check my right. Sorry, guys, you, you died. Shot. You, know? you get shot. Why didn't you peek with me, dude? Yeah, so didn't but say it's face. super <laughs> interesting. But they have that ping pong thing, but they do it on the on the shoulder. So they touch. And then whenever uh, that person behind you touched you, that's your ping. And then you're the pong and you go. You like, get you know, team so flash, they, you're fucked. Yo, they have the very interesting, like the strat caller when they enter a room is always number three because he can't be first. He's always behind. He's like, you know, it's very interesting. And it looks like a lot where we try to idolize in, in CS or yes, sometimes it happens that the strike color is the sniper or the entry, but most of the time it's more efficient to have that GL be like fourth man, Four, three, four, four men. About the round too. Yeah. Right? So like- it's very interesting. And then there one is supposed to go directly opposite and then you know two is supposed to go right away and then two, three four they support like stuff like that and if number one mess up or see someone in the way you're not supposed Supports to be, probably don't get any credit either yeah no <laughs> and if number one goes there then number two adjusts and does his job there's no like well number one went there like what the fuck you went the wrong way in a live situation shit happens there was an enemy there i went this way so no, you're number a lot, two you a lot see, of our teams did the opposite we, we, right a lot of our teams, I mean, it's hard to, to do on every part of the map, but a lot of times, like, let's say you're going out A halls on cobble. We'd have routes, like, no one is allowed to go the right side of fence except for the last guy. You know, like, because, like, you know, everyone wants to go behind the fucking fence yeah, and yeah. everyone gets stuck there. And then you're just four people behind a fucking wall and you all die. So you know, we had routes, you know, where people were, like, specifically, you run up this way, this guy's running behind you, the op's holding this, fourth guy goes out fence and waits and he mollies the site, you know, and then when these guys hit the truck, then he comes up, you know, like there's, there's timings to everything. Um, and I think that's like super important, which a lot of like, it's like, again, lower important. teams, like MDL teams, they don't think about that. They just kind of like enter a site. And when you just do things on the fly, it can work really well, or you can just instantly lose around because of one flash or one angle is not covered. And then, and then you lose. And speaking of cobble dust two, we did this as well. We used to have something that was called like, um, green, yellow, red. So if you're like, say you're on dust two and you're on cat, like the first part of cat is green. Then that second part of cat is yellow. And then the stairs are red. So like, instead of being like, he's on cat, which is very big area. You can say like, you know, he's yellow, so you know exactly where he is, kind of like, which I don't think a lot of people think about either. I think it's Navi that has a number, right? For every yeah, single little Yeah, I've heard they've had numbers. Spot. Oh, yeah. That, some... If you could remember that, that would be the most ideal. I feel like it would be so Apparently hard to it's... get all fun. If you know them, it's the most efficient system, but fuck learning them. I always do, <laughs> like, though, like a, a map, and I write, like, every team that I've been on, and then I like I, I write on the map every single little names. Um, rip to that because I don't deep right now, but I think it's so important to have the same language. Um, uh, but you know, you talked about the route. I think a lot of the CS player uh, in a round, let's say the route is fucked up, they blame the player that messed up the route instead of adjusting to it. And I think that's also like something we're not, we're kind of. We're kind of almost there yet as a community. We're we're about to reach that point where we're gonna be. Um, yeah, the route is important, and now pros are gonna be. The route is important, but if it goes oh, to yeah, shit, no. here's back. I, like, you know. I I totally agree because there'd be there'd be times where I'd be on a team and like sometimes everyone's human. You fuck up. Like if you go too early or like a little bit too thing, your team j- may just like watch you die. If I was ever behind someone like. I was, I put on a team with Jordan for years. So like every once in a while, like he would just have a feeling and he would just go without saying anything. 
and I would always run with him because, you know, if he's going, I'm going, you know, like to help him. And I would say like, we're out. And we actually won a bunch of rounds at uh, one of the majors versus fairy games. We're like, I remember we were doing this one strat on Inferno and we were supposed to throw like a smoke in front of like back then the car on Inferno Lane wasn't, there was no boxes. It was like a blue car that was a fucking bitch. The angles are all fucked up on it. But anyways, we th- would throw a smoke there and we throw like a flash, another smoke. And we'd like run directly in the site. Like we'd like bypass pit. And for some reason, Jordan just ran out of boiler and just went and jumped up on the car and like killed him and then killed the site guy. And I, and we just won the round and I was just like, what the fuck? But I went with him. You know what I mean? Like I went out and I helped him, you know, like I killed the site guy. He killed the pit guy. Oh, well, you know, that's, out. that's a harm eating. That's a harm eating. But I'm telling if you, your teammate I, goes in, you go in. That's what I mean. But like the, you'll play with some people and this happens the most in pugs, especially when they're bad, when they're bad players and they don't have great stats. You're like, all right. It, sometimes you even tell them they're like, I'm walking in B. You shouldn't have to tell someone when you're walking in B if they're behind you to walk with you. And they'll just like watch you. They're just like, oh man, good luck. And you're just like, maybe, maybe come, maybe come and help me. I don't know. Like trade the they kill. Just, they'll oh just hold a flash God. out. Like, how do I use this? That's thing? so or, true. Like, yeah. Holy shit. One time I literally did that in a pug. I don't know if my VOD still exists, but I was just like, why didn't you come with me? And he's like, you didn't tell me to. And I was just like, <laughs> my, my bad. <laughs> like, Dude, um, the, the, what you said is so true. And I'm the kind of that follows. I have no idea why. If my teammate is moving forward, brain shuts off. I follow. I'm with them, you know? And that sometimes it's awful. But then afterwards, like, I'm there to trade. And if we get an opportunity, we're there. But also, like, the amount of time that my leaders are like, why did you fucking do that? And I'm just like, well, actually, I don't know. I kind of brain shut. <laughs> saw my teammate go in. I'm like, I can't let alone yeah because a lot of a lot lot of the times the first guy's gonna die like realistically an entry frag Mm -hmm. i've always explained entry frag is two ways either the strat is designed around the entry fragger where he might have a chance like it might be set up where the flashes and the smokes are like protecting him but for the most part the first guy is like an info getter almost you know like he's going in be on mirage you go out you very rarely get the entry you're almost always like just dying and maybe you do 50 damage before he dies like best case and the second guy's just supposed to trade instantly you know so like a lot of being second and third is just being aware like oh he got shot from like cat you swing and just murder that guy instantly like a, a first guy is almost always just dead like i don't know what it's like in the army i'm assuming they're not all dying or no one want to do that but <laughs> no I, they have actually they have well i don't want to say success rate that's so weird but um their training is fucking amazing. I loved it. And it was Dude, no... You're an entry fragger. There's an 88% chance you die in this role, but <laughs> good luck. I, I don't know. It, it was a great... Like, trust in the army is so important. And I feel that in CS, we undervalue it so much, where um, I, I know a lot of you players out there don't trust your teammate because you think they're bad. Like, you know, I know. Thing. Like, that's just... <laughs> but but that... part, part of it isn't them being bad teammates. Some players are just greedy, which I guess makes you a bad teammate. But, like, like some of the people just like being, like, that baiter. You know, so even if they're second or third, they preferably want to be fourth. It's notorious in pugs for this to happen. Like, they'll just kind of find a way to slowly enter in, like, trickle in in the late part of the round. Like, and, and you'll see it all the time. Like, every once in a while, I'll even notice it from, like, the other side of the, the team, right? So you'll play, like, Dust 2, and they'll run off Cat. You'll kill, like, four guys there's it's a 1v5 this guy's just still on cat like what were you doing you're just watching the flank like while your teammates <laughs> ran off when they started dying did you ever think to come and help the other guy like they just kind of sitting there waiting for someone to push mid wait you know waiting for you know they just they just don't do anything and that happens less at pro level but oh, i'm the worst in pugs because i i assume everyone's gonna be there and i'm like i trust everyone and uh, a lot of the time, my stream or even people I'm playing with is like, "Why are you always going in? Like, just let let them go in and then clean up." I'm like, "Why? That's not my place. I just want to go." Like, <laughs> I totally feel you. I feel that the whole pug is just watching me go in. Oh my god. 
<laughs> yeah, they're very nice. afraid to go. Uh, you'll notice that if you ever play a another like say you play face and you ever like a five stack or like a three two or something, uh, but they're like those maniacs that all want to rush. Like every everyone's played versus a team where like all five T's just don't give a fuck if they're blind, <laughs> if they're like fired, they just run. They're usually French Canadian, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but they'll 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 just run no matter what, and it's fucking annoying to play versus people that scale so fast and are fearless because you're like normally you can like take a battle and then reposition you 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 kill one and the other dudes like jumping at you and like they're like above you behind you flashes are going off and it's really hard to play versus which is why like in pugs grouping is very powerful because you can just kind of like even if two guys die the next two guys can kind of like come out and just trade. But if people bait, then there's not yeah. much that can be done. I always say, too, when everything fails, group up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Four, Double four up one, or group up. <laughs> yeah, 4 1 is the most powerful thing you can do if you just are losing. Like, and like nothing is working because at least you have a chance to, like, you don't want to get flanked by some idiot that decided to push, but at the same time, like, you want your numbers to, um, like, to be strong because. You know, you can always walk into B on Dust 2 with 30 seconds left, and as long as you go one for one, you have a chance, right? Because your lower B is being held by your Lurker. You you have the bomb down in a 3v3. And a 3v3 is not guaranteed, but it's pretty favorable for the Ts. So, but, you know, if you're all splitting up, getting picked slowly one by one over the map, then, I mean, it's not going to work. Do you guys know the stats of a 3v3 bomb planted? Because I would assume... It if the bomb is planted and it's even, it should always go T side. Like, not always, but. I would say it would probably be very T sided until you get into those higher levels of like Astralis versus like uh, Navi's and stuff. Because I feel like the like Liquid, like Liquid and Astralis, like three threes are never one when you have B on, on Inferno, for example. Like, they'll molly new box, they'll molly emo, they'll throw a smoke banana, they'll throw a flash, and they'll mm -hmm. funnel in. And, like, you don't have a lot of spots left to play as a, as a T, so your retake is a lot harder than if you just play, like, a normal team that doesn't have mm -hmm. that coordination. I'd say bomb planted Ts win, like, 90% of the time until you get to that higher level <laughs> uh, rank. Also, it kind of matters how many nades you have left as a T. Like, if you have yeah, two smokes... Time. And, and a molly left, you can just throw a molly at the back halls. You can throw a, a smoke at the main, and like the CT's oh, like fuck, like <laughs> we got we got to wait. And it just if you have no nades left, though, I'd say like almost maybe even CT favored sometimes if, if the CTs have nades and the Ts have nothing. Um, but then again, it's utility usage of the actual players. Do you guys think we need a? There's an MVP, but do you think we need the? Actually, MVP is kind of most. Do you guys think MVP is based off of stats? It's and if, like if so, tournament. should we have a it seems like... mostly stats? Yeah, the H dude. I'm pissed. I'm, I'm actually kind of pissed with HLTV's MVP methodology. It's literally like, who cares who wins the tournament? Just best guy to make the finals every freaking time. Yes. Now. it's like they don't even, dude. They're like not. I mean, maybe they watch, but like, dude, are they really watch? Like, are they really seeing like? Cause who, who like elevated the winning team? Like, dude, it feels like Zywoo and Simple. Yeah, they're really fucking good, but like, do they really deserve all these MVPs when they like? What about the dude that's like making sure Liquid makes it over that final hump to win the tournament, or who's that guy that gets like that team to win? And it's like, if someone won like three clutches, yeah. sometimes their stats aren't the best, but those were the most important three clutches, and they wouldn't. I agree, unless it's like some one of those weird scenarios where some dude has like one point one FPR, and it's just like okay, literally yeah. so insane. You know, like it's just it's like oh my god, this guy was like plus ten every map. I'm kind of like all right, the which simple did a couple times where I'm just like, look, you can't even argue. This guy was literally so fucking good that like no one is better but for the most part yeah I, I agree the winning team like someone like device with a 0.8 versus simple with a 0.84 fpr like device is probably more impactful maybe, like maybe yeah maybe yeah. we need another one split mvp into two like um like personal uh, per personal performance <laughs> individual performance and then like like yeah impact team, like, imp impact like team based like I, I don't know like you know we just make mvp impactful and then make a, a new award for what you're saying for the best statistical performer that made it 
X. Yeah, yeah, maybe something like that. So then simple with all with yeah, weird. most on fire or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah just, he would win his fire thing, but then we could also HLTV should just get a sponsor, else. like the Betway player of the tournament or the Betway <laughs> top yeah, fracker or true. something like that. Yes. I also think it would be kind of cool if they had like uh, at the you know when they like after the game's over they just had like a like a uh, flashiest grenade of the game and it just shows you like someone with like the cr whoever had like a craziest lineup for like because some people <laughs> throw crazy mollies and, and flashes that are like weird you know like they're like like uh, a good example was snacks back in the day where he would throw like some of those yeah, cobble smokes he out was of spawn so weird <laughs> and and nuke he would throw the one that landed heaven from spawn but he could throw it from any of his spawns so like I don't even know like how much effort this guy put in to like figure these all out. Like, <laughs> what if we had like stars? One and just <laughs> stars like in hockey, like number three, and then like you know you have three stars yeah. at every game. <laughs> Maybe you, you, you're American, right? I just watch when the sharks do well because okay, you're area. from San Jose. Okay, um, so in hockey, at the end of a game, there's three stars. So there's a so some, a lot of the time the goalies get a star mm -hmm. even if they lose uh, just because like what they did matters. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, for sure. Know? So maybe if we had three stars in CS, we would see more diversity <laughs> in like support players winning yeah, MVPs. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you'll never think Zipmix is never gonna win a, an MVP. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like he can be so impactful. Like it's kind of uh, yeah. I'm a big fan of him. It's ridiculous. Every time he's in a one v something, you're just I like, almost, I almost feel he like gets he turns. Better. Yeah, no, he turns on another part of his yeah. brain for sure. I yeah. made this. I make this joke with my friends that every time I see Zipnix in a three v three, I'm sleep. But I see him in a one v three, I'm a, I'm awake now. I'm woke now. Like it's just like, dude, he doesn't play the same at all. It's like in a three v three, dude, dude just misses like the easiest shot sometimes, and then in a in a one v three, it's like. You just kill them all with headshots. Like I get it. Like you're, and, you're, I think and, people and, like so. turn afraid of him though. They're like, oh shit. Yeah, <laughs> his reputation helps him out. Shit, he's coming, and then they just like he just kills them. <laughs> I also feel like the better you are at clutching, the dumber people seem to make. Like they just like kind of walk around a corner backwards, <laughs> like looking at something. Yeah. Like you just kill him, and then like you kill the other guy while he's planning, and it's a one v one, and you're like, dude, what the fuck? Like a, it looks like a silver could have won that round, but like at the same time they wouldn't know. You know, it's just like. Right. It's weird, but it always happens to the same guys. So it's like it can't be just luck. Like it has to be like their timing and decision making. But you know, they were the one baiting on Cap. That's why they won these ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. They practiced it a lot. He was that pugger just in B tunnels. While his team... I think I think Swag even said that before that he used to bait like really hard in pugs or something. Like someone asked him on his stream hell long ago, like how'd you get so good at clutching? And he's like, you just got to bait in a lot. Of, like play pugs to bait. <laughs> Dude, I was on a team with Brax. He would watch you die and like not try yeah. to kill. Like just he's like, oh, it's fine, whatever. I'll get him later. <laughs> like and you're like, dude, <laughs> yeah. why didn't you just kill him? Cold used to do that to Taco all the time, all the time. Literally just <laughs> watches Actually, I've him seen die. That. Yeah. I've seen that. But I, I know, I'm not sure it was intentional for Cold. He seemed like that's just think there's an, he thinks that's not the best way to win the round. He yeah. thinks that trading might not be the best entry into that round. He thinks that. Have some info here. Maybe we can make a different macro play. I think on be more CT successful. side, sometimes not trading instantly if you think they're gonna like come up might be smarter in certain situations. Yeah, not. But I feel like on T side, it's almost always better to just trade it though. Like I can't think of a scenario on T side where like you to just trade the kill instantly. I agree, but I also think that um, <laughs> you know when we come back to like Zipnix kind of becoming like a god when he comes on i don't know about you guys when you play but for me i believe that communication like trying to play so team play in these like 2v2s 3v3s sometime uh hurts my gameplay because i want to be playing so teamwork uh that i like focus too much on that and when i'm alone i'm like well there's no team to be done this is just me my brain my skill um and then I am very successful in those moments. That's how I feel. Because it's, it's a question of timing in yourself, and that's it. There's no, like, trying to convey a message to someone else. Oh yeah, that's true. You can just kind of zone in. I don't know. That, that's what I think in... But yeah, you try, to, you try to be a good teammate in Pugs. When I do well, I'm, just, I'm actually just muting everybody.
Come yeah, honestly, I'm, just, like, I'm honestly the worst when I when I tried so much to do uh, teamwork, uh, especially yeah. when I haven't played for a long time. It's like I try so much to collaborate with you. So you tell me exactly what you said. Uh, <laughs> yeah. like, he's cat. He's cat. And then all of a sudden, like I'm in T spawn and he's right there. And I'm like, you just said he was cat. And I was running with my knife out. You know? <laughs> yeah. And any plan a pugger makes, I'm just like, I have a better plan, like, but <laughs> I'm gonna, no, I'll just like keep that in mind, you know, like, oh my god, I you got the backup plan, this. yeah, <laughs> dude. Sometimes people just don't respond to you, too. Like, uh, sometimes on cash, like, I'll be truck and be like, yo, I have a flash for your site, yeah, like, exactly. And, and I'm like, just tell me when, tell me when, and they just like never say anything, and they just die. And I'm just like, <laughs> all right, dude, I guess you didn't want help, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I know, I could find them all for you, like. They don't know what these nades do, like, how good a flash can be. I'll flash front red for you. I'm, I'm good. I'm good over here. Not gonna All, fight right. Him. All right. Oh, I'm nice. just white swing. I think some newer players, though, it's not really, like, they're intentional. I think they just zone in so hard. You know, like, when smokes and molly start popping, they don't, z they don't hear you. You know what I mean? Like, they're just, like, they're focused, oh, like, yeah. on their game. Yeah. And... That's like a big problem I think like newer people have or people that don't play on teams so that they're not used to it. Because um, anytime I've ever played with like a newer, like not a newer player because they've usually been like MDL level or whatever, they always seem to take a little while before they start communicating like efficiently during battles. Like yeah. they might be fine like at the start of rounds or like when nothing's going on. But as soon as like, you know, shit's going down, they just, they, nothing comes out. Like, they, that's why they a lot of the new players never switch to push to talk. They like yeah, that can you help. Guys like them. keyboard ASMR in your games or I just push to talk. <laughs> no, but them. the new the newer yeah. players don't. Yeah, they, they a like... lot of the players I know that are younger don't use push to talk. They're used to like the Discord and whatever, and they they're just they'd rather mute their mic when they're dead than I uh, press a button in a fight. I know that's what oh, yeah. David does. I mean, it were it's honestly really easy to talk with no key, but it, when you go to tournaments, it can be problematic if the crowds and stuff get. It's a nightmare. And then people are like, "No, no, it's fine, it's fine." And you're like, it's not fine, dude. We can hear literally everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not fine. <laughs> or so like, they're yeah, always telling you it's fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, coming. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, I think it's been like two and a yeah. Half we've hours. been talking for a long yeah. time, guys. Yeah, so let's let's just, wrap this up. Just, Is it because you know. Davey's not here? He's in charge. Yeah, he always uh, hurries us up, man. Whenever we get to talk. Honestly, don't know how long we've been on here. I just lo I just lose track like, track of time and space when I do these podcasts. <laughs> like <laughs> we're going on two and a half. Yeah, Pretty this long. is like oh, okay, okay, that's longer than I thought. All Have right, you, so, do you guys do that every day? Fuck. Like, no, 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 no. No, it's usually once a week. One a week. Yeah, okay. we're, we're doubling up this time because we missed one last week. That's all. Oh, okay. yeah, Davey couldn't handle two, so he's he's so out. he's yeah. out. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. dodged it. It takes a lot, you know. Yeah. All right. So, uh, anything you want to shout out? Thanks for coming on. And uh, yeah. you got any, anything else you want to say? Uh, no, I started a French YouTube, but I think that's irrelevant because we're <laughs> English <laughs> podcast. Uh, yeah. But uh, I guess if you guys want to follow me, I do want to stream <laughs> more. I am actually going to switch and go stream some COD. On Mixer? Release. No, <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to go. They bought out you there. out. Uh, not yet. Oh, wearing a Twitch. And if they were buying Twitch. me out, they were not buying me out. For I don't stream that much anymore. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to try to do that. But I do a lot of Instagram stories. And I think that's where people can actually see my personality because I'm pretty uh quirky i don't know like silly and whatever it's always somewhere <laughs> new so if you like to see <laughs> new areas of the world yeah so i do a lot of instagram stories because I, I i that's where i showcase much of my work whenever i'm a, a talk or traveling or whatever uh because it's too much work to post on all the socials so i usually just do it while i'm flying or something so uh yeah follow me on the instagram stuff rv because i can't get miss rv for some reason and uh everything else is miss rv and just know that every you viewer if you like every, that you do to any of your favorite people whether you're watching this podcast or um supporting everyone that's here on twitter what not matters so if you think it does it does and we mostly read all of them uh we don't answer all of them especially if they're 
mean, but uh, <laughs> we do, most of us read all of them. So thank you so much for the support, everyone. And thank you for having me, guys. I know I was a do we do gay back up, but I appreciate it because uh, it's fun to do this. Uh, yeah, well, we need you sometimes when Stewie is not reliable. He doesn't come on, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I, I had said that we should get um, a girl on before. It just happened to work that Stewie canceled. You know, like, obviously, uh, you can't trust him, you know? You yeah. Just, shit. He's Snake in chat right now. Oh, he He's was pushing a chat. smoke somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, thank you so much for having me. And, and when you do the round of all that were interesting you can come back to me <laughs> and i'll be yeah. i'll be on your awesome. podcast again thank you guys